feels like it's ever closer to the same thing. <laughs> Welcome to We Are Libertarians for this week. I am your host, Chris Spangle. Uh, joining me, as always, across the table, uh, the center of the aisle today is Greg Lenz. Greg, how are you? I like this whole new thing where, depending <laughs> on where my stance is based upon our guests, I move seats. So I'm the right. middle today. I, Tyler, or uh, I'll let you introduce them before. <laughs> uh, uh, returning are two champions of We Are Libertarians. We've got uh, Harry. Harry Price. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Going good. Got the green microphone today. Yes, you do. Yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. I, of course, am wearing my neon green shorts and my neon green shirt. So I am looking very festive. Mountain Dew Fresh. I am. <laughs> you look like a two liter. <laughs> and then in the Make America Great hat again is Tyler Weiss. Weiss. Ooh, yeah, Weasel Wits. Sweet, whatever. However you want to pronounce it. It's spelled the same. Uh, so you uh, you have a tiny head. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that hat, we all tried it on. We all took photos. We'll, uh, we'll put it up on the Instagram at We Are Libertarians. And uh, you can get a good shot of all of us in the hat. What kind of Trump supporter agrees with that? You're supposed to say, look at well, this hat. Well, I was going to let him finish. <laughs> right. I was gonna let him finish. <laughs> right. And then I was going to say, I don't have a small head. Donald Trump just has an extremely large head <laughs> he has because a... of all of his brain and smarts. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. He has a big head, yeah. I, I uh, tried it on. It, it was a little tight on me. Harry, we couldn't get it over your hair. Yeah. You uh, have what is affectionately known as a fro. Yep, yep. Uh, it's getting warm out, so I decided to get the hair back out. Wearing a fro. Uh, mm -hmm. Harry, uh, as you may know, is a member of the black community. Yes. Right. Correct, yes. He inducted you on an episode, if you remember correctly. That's right. How do I, I join? Uh, well, you're not going to get in wearing that hat, that's for sure. <laughs> not not Louis, necessarily. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on. Uh, we, and we've got a lot of things happening here in the studio. We're, we're recording this on my iPad to put up on the YouTube. We're periscoping this. Uh, not live though. Nah, it's periscoping live, but the, the YouTube isn't live. Um, so far we have two listeners nice. on the Periscope. Ooh. Ooh. Shout out to the fans. Yeah, so I'll probably turn that off after a while um, <laughs> so I can continue to text my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, can they see me? Uh, you aren't allergic to a cat, are you? Me? No. Yeah. I, I had the most famous cat on YouTube at one point in time. <laughs> what? Yeah, Butters McNutt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What? You guys never heard about Butters McNutt? No. I, no. No. Please tell Butters us. Butters B. McNutt was my famous, uh, famous cat. Yeah. And I wrote a song about him. One, her. I call him a him because I don't know why, but I wrote a song about her one night and recorded it and made a music video and put it on YouTube and okay. got quite a few views. And that was the same channel that was Bill Station, but YouTube decided to take it down. Hmm. Uh, content, sexual content, and other... Was it sexual content with the cat? No, <laughs> not with the cat. All of our other music videos and just... We had like three strikes on our account. It was pretty bad. I've been lobbying to get it back for like six years. And and uh, apparently uh, Google has not heard your cries. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They don't like free speech, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Oppressors. Yeah. Stupid community standards. Keep trying. Sergey. <laughs> Change it from the inside. You can do it. Uh, oh, boy. You, I'm on live link now, baby. I'm <laughs> on <laughs> live link. What is on, what are you, are you still doing things on live link? What are you doing? No, I'm not doing anything. Uh... You you can, you do have some of your songs up there. What are... No, yeah, they're, I think they're on SoundCloud. Uh, couldn't even tell you where they're at. We had a website, but I think it expired. Because uh, I've heard your songs. Oh, yeah. We have like 34 songs or That's, something like that. I bet you I can find it real quick and we'll play a little bitty. Nah, you don't uh, have to. A little ditty? Like don't. We'll, no. we'll play what, a little bitty. Let's ditty. talk politics. What's your favorite? Uh, what, do, what would you say your favorite is? I like uh, White Trash. That one's pretty good. Okay. Uh, uh, Fuck Class. That one's go Whoop. not going to class. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to curse on me? Try not to, but uh, you did, so it doesn't matter. Oopsies. Oopsies. <laughs> uh, forget class. 
probably should have planned for music if you don't want to hear the terms. <laughs> it's fine. You you also had a uh, a ton of dunk videos. Too. Oh yeah, no, I the first video I ever put on YouTube was in two thousand. When did it start? 2006? 2006? Yeah, 2006. Somewhere around there, yeah. What's yeah. a dunk video? <laughs> I, See, Harry, this is where we, uh, white boys from the suburbs... Yeah, <laughs> we used to go out and just... I'd film my two buddies going out and just freestyle dunking. They're basketball players, and they just... I don't know. We just had nothing to do. And so I uploaded, It was Martinsville. Yeah, you I... You know, you made stuff happen. Right. Yeah, okay. you, gotta, you, gotta make, you gotta make... You gotta make yourself great. <laughs> right. So we'd upload these videos, and overnight it made the front page of YouTube... This back was before YouTube was YouTube, but yeah, I, I ended up doing quite a bit of stuff. Lean, oh, it opened up quite a few doorways. Like actually what? got involved with the documentary that was on dunking and some oh. other things. Name name the doors that this opened. A lot, a lot. Yeah. Building seven, <laughs> the, the inside yeah. dunk. Have you ever heard of thermite? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, are you a conspiracy theorist? Tyler, you don't seem well like by the are. definition of conspiracy. No, I, no, not really. No, he's a great American that supports Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't think you I, are, I, Harry, are you? As no, far no, I, I indulge him. I like them. I was for a time, you know, trapped in them because I have a distrust from the government. So you kind of fall into that. But once you realize, like, wait a minute, you realize how incompetent <laughs> they are. You're like, yeah, they can keep this under wraps. Yeah, mm -hmm. how can they? Yeah, I'm but now the grays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the, the reptile the shadow people. people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here, here we go. I don't know if you guys. What will, song is this? This is white. Industrial. This is white trash. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but I will. Just play the chorus. The, then. The, you got some samples. You got your karate chop. It's actually pretty good. Are these on? Yeah. Okay, I put that there and showed it already. Tagged you. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> You're tagged it. Did you hit Lacey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you haven't even heard the flow yet. Oh, we haven't? I dropped a hot 16, but Pretty we can do that later. Pretty they can go to the website or find it wherever. Yeah, I'll put this in the show notes. So if you go to wearelibertarians.com, look up this episode, and, and we'll put it in there, and you can check it out. And also, your cousin Aaron uh, can't spell at all. Well, no, he's uh, got two two A's in his name. <laughs> so it's B-I-L-L-E station, Ville station, as in Martinsville station, not Vile mm -hmm. station. We are yeah. quite vile, though. Yeah. Repulsive. Uh, well, uh, first off, before we get started, uh, now that we've uh, delighted ourselves with a little white trash Ville Station. Was that a paid sponsorship, by the way? <laughs> no, you owe me your $20. Thank you for paying. What happened with the $20 yeah, that's, that's yeah. you used? That got a cat food? That was for the plug. We oh, got okay. <laughs> well, here's 20 more. Play another yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, the, the people who have donated since our last episode, uh, all monthly contributors with the, uh, with the exception of Joshua, CJ Rodine, Aaron Jones, and Mark English, thank you very much. Right. Harry made a, a large contribution, uh, one of the largest ever in the history of the show, before the, uh, before the podcast began. Are we doing uh, pay-for-play now? Is this a payola scheme? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then also, uh, I'm distracted now. I need to to turn this off because Are you on, listening? on Periscope, Bob and Tom just joined the Periscope, and I want to know who that was. It has to be better. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we got a note from uh, one other computer. Thank you also to Tyler for uh, donating. Thank you for having me on. Joshua Lachlan. I know that because he put a little note as, as to how to pronounce his name on his donation. He said, buy Jeremiah that pizza you owe him. Love your show. I started listening to podcasts because of it. I also got my wife to start listening to podcasts because of it. Thanks for all you do, Joshua Laughlin. Lachlan. I still messed your name up. Joshua, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I will not be using that money to buy Jeremiah pizza because Jeremiah was warned that he would be buying my pizza that day, 
and that's just tough shit, buddy. Hey, we we are libertarians, oh, and weird. personal responsibility is at the core of everything we believe. And so, if he wants a pizza, he needs to buy it himself. I told him. I said, "Listen." So Jeremiah picked me up because I was depressed, and he said, "Hey, buddy, <laughs> I want to take you out. I I I'll buy pizza." Or he said, "Let's go to pizza." And I said, "Okay, that's fine, but tomorrow's payday, and I've got seven dollars. I have seven dollars in cash." And you're just in the, like. Early on in the divorce, yeah. the finances were like getting split up and down. Right. Out. And so I said, uh, listen, dude, uh, I'm going to warn you, you're buying. I'll pay seven bucks, but that's all I got. I said it three different times. And then when the check came, oh, uh, where's your money? I said, that's what I have, seven dollars. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's, this is income based, right? <laughs> I would have took your ass to CC's and been like, here, yeah. take, take some home. home. Give me Little the two other dollars yeah. for, uh, for cash money. Yeah. No, he took me to Giacomo's. Oh, yeah. shit. Whoa. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, they got a legit one, too. Oh, they, and they I got talked one of the specialty ones. And I talked him into the Slaughterhouse Five. Yep. Oh, we need shit. a large. We need a large. Yeah, I'll take the extras home. <laughs> Bread sticks and cheese sauce. <laughs> Can I get some garlic parmesan as well? You're looking at three like three figures on that yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah with no. drinks oh yeah well i i get water yeah um, because i'm aggressively hydrated yeah i get yeah. this is uh i i drink these nalgene bottles you know they're they're 32 ounces uh this is the fifth one i've had today good yeah i drink like a gallon of water a day that's i, I don't know if you got my snapchat or not but i was at the bar earlier and i saw Someone just had those sitting there on the bar. I was like, well, shit, Spangle's been here. Because you leave a trail of them everywhere <laughs> yeah. everywhere you're at. Everywhere I go, I always the have bread two crumbs. Crumbs. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are. So he finds his way home. Yeah. <laughs> he goes into a I'm overhydrated. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very healthy. Does coffee count as water? No. Yeah, yeah it does. No, it dehydrates yeah. you. No, it doesn't. Yes, no. it does. That's yeah. a common it's, misconception. Yeah. I don't agree with and that. And it cures cancer. Yeah. Really? I read it on a blog. And it, <laughs> and it re heals yeah. your liver. Listen, exactly. I was yeah. on Tumblr. Uh, yeah, I was on Tumblr. <laughs> Triggered! Doing my daily uh, self flagellation for being a white male and a, and a cis scum lord. Yeah. But, you know, uh, we just in the last episode, uh, well, in the last podcast posted in this feed, was not the last We're Libertarians. It was actually the uh, relaunch of Creating Maya. And Ma Maya, what? <laughs> no, I mentioned a a, tra a transgender person's name and you start laughing. <laughs> I was actually looking at my phone, but okay. yeah, that is right. a good name though. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, Maya, Maya and I have been friends for a very long time, and it was a little weird when she came out uh, as trans. And the whole podcast uh, that we did from year one to two. Of her transition, and then we decided to do on her fourth anniversary a, a catch-up podcast. Uh, and you can go back and check all the other ones out in the in the other feed. Don't worry, we're not putting it in the feed. I got a couple comments like, "You always put things that aren't the show in the feed." It's like, yeah, because we have like a million subscribers to this feed, and I want to drive traffic. So thank you to everybody for subscribing to all of our new podcasts. Uh, the the Creating Maya podcast. I'm going to start actually doing some stuff on the Chris Spangle Show podcast. Uh, we put out the show report and uh, story time of Gina from long ago out in iTunes and on Google Play if you want to go back and catch up on some of that. And uh, we also launched uh, the Gary Johnson podcast, so you can uh, go back and check out some... Uh, yeah, I know. It's it's terrible for you Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump supporter. I just like his hat. It's fast and <laughs> He's got swag. He does. I've never seen someone wear a hat with a blue blazer and a white button-up shirt. With no Everywhere. Time. He's... Yeah. And it looks cool, like, shockingly. Mm -hmm. So to finish the podcast roster, there's also Raw Audio Politics, where uh, I basically take YouTube videos and put up raw audio of, of speeches, of interviews, of whatever. Um, I don't know about the IP laws on that. I'm, uh, I, <laughs> I give full credit whenever I, whenever I post the audio and the YouTube videos. Um, and then, uh, so you can get, that, get those three new podcasts and our old podcast. Everything's back out there. Uh, back in iTunes, so just go to iTunes and search for We Are at We Are Libertarians, or you can go to WeAreLibertarians.com, and on the front page, you too can get the new podcast, download uh, uh, all of all of the episodes of We Are Libertarians, listen to all of them if you'd like. You can make a donation. You can check out our path to libertarianism. It's our our, our guide to what is a libertarian, to the three basic principles of libertarianism. 
and also there's Upward, which is uh, candidate training, uh, activism training, and in those two specific ugh, specific areas coming soon, uh, look for new podcasts on both activism and on uh, the basics of libertarianism. So, lot lot coming down the pipe from the We Are Libertarians universe, uh, and I can tell you it is all because of the donations that you guys, the support. Once you start to see, you know, the way that you guys are, are supporting us, that gives a new wind in our sails. That's why we've been consistent. That's why we're updating the website, putting new stuff up all the time. Uh, and, you know, it's got me motivated to do, to do well for you guys. And uh, everybody, everybody on Team We Are Libertarians, I think, is, is pumped. Yeah, oh, absolutely. This is great. I love it. We're yeah, gonna, we're gonna really increase. You know, you deserve production value for contributing, and so we're gonna try to amp, ramp it up and give it to you. And I'll tell you, we have added four over four hundred new people to the Facebook uh, page, four hundred new likes this week alone, and it's because we're taking those contributions and putting it towards advertising, boosting posts, buying likes, and, and basically buy likes by like advertising to specific groups of people, for instance. Uh, so you are helping contribute to the growth of the show. Uh, lots of big plans coming in the future. A lot of things in my head that I have to put on paper and then figure out how to do that. A lot of top-down, centrally yeah. planned libertarianism <laughs> heading Ab towards you. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, Greg, you posted something last night. Was it you that posted something? I haven't had a chance to check the website. No, Creighton. Yet. Creighton is Creighton. Creighton is apoplectic about the situation of the Republic. Um, he doesn't recognize his country anymore. <laughs> he, I mean, he he can't vote for Gary Johnson because he's a wasted vote party or you know wasted vote kind of guy. Okay. Um, Donald Trump is everything Creighton hates. Of course. And it's Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, non-starters. Yeah. You know, one kills people for a, a living, and the other one feels the burn. And you know, So what is he going to do? Chastise the rest of America until they get their act together. That'll, okay. that'll be effective. All right. Nothing works to quiet an angry mob like reason and logic. Uh, hey, yeah. hold on just a second. Hey, Harry. What's up? Can you turn that light off, please? I, then wow. I didn't snap. Wow. <laughs> far, far, left, far left switch. Thank you, Harry. Uh, it's interfering with the video. Uh -huh. So no, Tyler actually got it. There, there's a long running video quality. <laughs> oh, oh, right. oh, Excellent yeah. segue. Excellent well, segue. One of the, the fastest ways that we've ever grown is when we used to Google Hangout and record, uh, live stream these and put them on YouTube and archive them. I mean, it wasn't the live streaming. It was the archiving of the video with the current events and it, that made it you know it created seo hits it, tons. basically and so that's what we're doing we're doing that harry you actually came to us because of that yeah correct, correct. uh so we're going to take video in this video this week you get to see uh the, the other three guys you don't get to see me um and so uh but there's a long-running joke that harry one time when he was here uh we were doing the show and somebody knocked on the door and harry was the closest to the door i'm kind of trapped back in my little fortress here and so I just innocently, without thinking, said, Hey, Harry, can you get the door, please? <laughs> and Greg, of course, made it racial. Well, I watch out for these things. I've known from my racist era. My racist era. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well known for my racist era. For my racist no, past. For my, for my racial sensitivity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are many things you can say, but not that I am not racially sensitive. Of course. Uh, I think we should talk about Austin Peterson first. I think that's kind of the, the thing that is on the top of my mind. Yeah, and like Harry's segue was about the um, lack of video quality of the first libertarian presidential debate back in February, where I don't know if it was a Nokia phone where you could like... Exchange the covers, and that's what they used to the live a stream. Go, was it a razor? Go okay, go I, I thought it was a razor, but then it had like a weird Instagram, like sepia filter, but kind of washed out. That was mute. That's and then funny. Blair Witch. You can make <laughs> on it. You can actually see this video, and then you can get the podcast of that said debate in the raw audio politics feed and the Gary Johnson feed. And I cleaned it up so so the audio in the podcast is a little bit better because I used some of my my uh, radio training to try and do my best to clean that audio up for Skill? you. Skill? Yes. Skill? Oh, sorry. 
so spontaneous or weird. orderly um, cleaning up of audio for the LP, thanklessly. They could just had a Wi-Fi connection and just hold the candidates to Periscope themselves <laughs> while on stage. No one had a GoPro <laughs> in the entire audience full of hearings. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. So we we're going to talk about the candidates and how people did. And did anyone watch it? I didn't. No, did, uh, no I yeah, tried. Yeah. That was horrible. Or did anyone listen? No, I started I, the watching audio, it. Yeah, the audio for me was terrible too. I yeah. tried. Usually I can like stomach through like bad audio. Like if you listen to my podcast list, it's like wow, this is some bad audio. I couldn't make it through that. Yeah, yeah. I listen to podcasts that have technical issues halfway through the show, mm -hmm. have to stop, turn it back on. Yeah, it sounded like the mic was seven feet away from. I, I don't know. It was just bad. Yeah, yeah. toilet yeah. microphones. Yeah, it wasn't a good presentation for. It was sort of. It was promoted as the Libertarian Party's. I, I joked, jokingly called it cotillion. It was our introduction to society on a massive stage, given the current situation mm -hmm. between the Republicans and Democrats and the candidates they're putting forward. And so you have a race where, how I, I know there's always a challenge to get the presidential nomination for the LP, but this is a large number of entrants, isn't it? Uh, no, this is a pretty fair amount of entrance. But uh, quality, really quality entrance. Yeah, the, I, I would say the three top tier candidates in Gary Johnson, John McAfee, and I would include Austin Peterson in that top three just because Austin has shown himself to be an effective messenger and has been able to build a pretty good uh, follow uh, behind him, following behind him. Uh, the, those three would, would are, are pretty commonly they would be the nominee in any year. Yeah. So in four years ago, it was Gary Johnson versus Lee Wrights. Lee Wrights is a, a great guy, great libertarian, but Lee Wrights is a longtime party member who is a very pure, yeah, very pure libertarian uh, and is just not a two-term governor from New Mexico. So the choice was pretty clear, uh, but there were like 10 other guys that ran. Uh, and then... Four years before that, it was Wayne, Al Wayne Allen Root, Bob Barr. Wasn't and, it Ron Paul in 08? Uh, no, no, no. He no. ran in for as a Republican. He ran in 88 mm -hmm. as a Libertarian. That's right. Yeah, it was a Republican. Yeah. Then he got third, and then the yes. Republican does what they do and suspend democracy and Democratic got primaries. Yes. Paved the way for Trump. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> that year was like Ernie Hancock and Wayne Allen Root and Bob Barr. And Bob Barr was, I think... For the most part, the clear choice, but he's a very controversial pick just because of his Republican past and former DOMA author. That's the killer. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to sell being the act, rather than like voting for it, being the author yeah. of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. And then before that, Centralization it was Central. Michael Badnarik. Michael Badnarik, uh, not a politician, not a person with political experience. A guy who teaches constitution classes around the country. Um, not, uh, I think he was the last of the picks that would be seen as, it was the presidential picks, other than I think Harry Brown. Harry Brown, if you Google his name and look him up, Harry Brown did a lot in the 90s, in the 92 and 96 elections, to bring people to the Libertarian Party. And... A lot of people were our libertarians because of Harry Brown. I'm sorry, I keep yawning. <laughs> I'm boring. Well, we are talking about a libertarian presidential yeah. debate. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We're debating the proper way to implement road privatization mm -hmm. and yelling at each other. See what <laughs> point you're Listen, Listen I, I am like a diesel engine. You get me going, I gotta stay constant. And I, t I just sat down and like read and lounged for like an hour and a half before you guys got here. Never should have done it. You gotta keep we'll, the motor going. We'll get you going. We'll get to Trump. You told me yeah. not to come till seven. I was prepared to be here. I know at five. Uh -huh. That would have been like, that would have been like a felony. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a, like a hate crime almost against Canadians. But uh, Badnarik in 04 was really kind of the last of all right. We need a presidential candidate. Which one of us is going to run? You know. And then Barr came in, and then um, you know we had Gary Johnson, and both with political experience. 
Well, yeah, I mean, elected officials with an incredible track, you know, with the kind of track record you can sell to libertarians, even the most pure. Right. Yeah. You know, and then uh, Ed Clark in what, 1980? Because yes. Gary Johnson has the most pure number of votes for a libertarian candidate. Right. Mm -hmm. But Ed Clark had the highest per ca for like per capita. So the amount of votes cast, because he had like 1.3% of the electorate that voted for him in 80. He also had one of the Koch brothers as his vice presidential candidate. So. Which you'd have never guessed. <clears throat> yeah. So, I, yeah, the Koch brothers, I mean, it, their history with the Libertarian Party is is very interesting. They were in, involved in the Libertarian Party in the early days, and then they kind of saw that the third party and the Libertarian Party wouldn't exactly be the way to go. And so they started funding the Cato Institute, Founded Reason, Reason. you know, uh, Fee. Uh, heritage for the economic stuff. Heritage, yeah. I mean, the, the Heartland, I, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, now a group that you and I are associated with and, and yeah. bringing new libertarians here locally, Americans. America's Future, or America's Future Foundation, yeah. AFF. Which, you know, those are all great and those all spread liberty. But the Cokes, I think, got tired and saw the writing on the wall. They were making large financial contributions they really were like um i guess you could say say part of that early startup team to give it the venture capital it needed to get off the ground get credibility yes. and if you look at it it's interesting because like in 80 it's clark and then in 88 it's ron paul so you have an elected texas congress you know congressman who had a, had a presence you know it wasn't like he was some random you know some random uh House like Todd Rokita or somebody like that. Yeah, even then, you know, Texas Straight Talk that was a newsletter going around the country, you know, it was very popular. Very, especially when they got racist. Yeah, <laughs> no, just kidding. But you know, Ron Paul, and so that was a really like great launch and acceleration. But then it kind of had like a a period where it wandered around before it caught its surge with what two thousand. Um, who was the person in 2000. I honestly don't know. I'll I'm have not to sure. look it up. All right. I mean, but Ron was always loosely affiliated and he really, just, you know, championed a lot of the things. And then Gary looks, because uh, Gary and Ron both sought the Republican nomination in 2012. Yes. Gary was in the first debate and then Ron, I mean, Ron was top three mm -hmm. early on. Really probably should have been in it all the way to the end, but um, Gary couldn't find like a coalition. Because yeah. he's Ron, Ron and Gary represent the same brand of the Liberty mm -hmm. Caucus, and Ron is the god, and Gary's the new upstart, you know, protege. <laughs> but you know, Gary was groomed to be a new brand of Western Republican Republicanism within the party. In the American Conservative, in like '09, did a full spread on him, talking about how he was the most, you know, like timed it on Rand, the most interesting man in the Republican Party, mm -hmm. and the, the future strain of it, and the platform of it. And then it's like, after he only got in the first debate and couldn't get any traction in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. he took a little period of, and he t he pledged all his few supporters to Ron yeah. and told people to support him. But that's when the Libertarian Party in 2012 uh, reached out to him to run. Yeah, so the first uh, candidate uh, was John Hospers with uh, Theodora Nathan. Uh, Tony Nathan actually just passed away. She's the first female in the history of the United States to get an electoral vote. Because the Hospers Nathan ticket, while only getting 3,000 votes in the United States, there was a Virginia delegate that just hated uh, Nixon. And so he wouldn't cast his vote for Nixon, and so he gave it to Hospers Nathan. Then Roger McBride and David Berglin, and then Ed Clark and David Koch. Dave Berglin ran in 84, uh, Ron Paul in 88, Andre Maru in 92. Um, that had a rhyme. That's an easy slogan. Dr. Seuss. Perry Brown in 96 and 2000. And he's a great candidate and a great yeah. guy. Yeah, he's written a lot of great books. You can go to theadvocates.org, where our friend Brett Bittner and Chloe Nagnos work, and get uh, the what the the Great Libertarian Offer. It's on my bookshelf over there, um, a lot of, and a lot of other books. And then Badnarik, Bob Barr, and Gary Johnson. I believe Gary Johnson will be our nominee this time. But it's interesting because a lot of people like McAfee. Like, Harry, yeah. do you guys have specific thoughts on the Libertarian, like, all three of you, you know, who you like? <laughs> I like McAfee because he's, he's a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, McAfee's crazy. Um, I do respect him because, like, you know, in the, being an IT guy, you know, like, I kind of, like, looked up to read a lot of his stuff in, like, in um, the early 90s, but kind of a Johnson guy, but I'm also a Darren W. Perry guy, who did finish three votes behind Austin Peterson. 
lot of the polls, so yeah. it's like close number four. Daryl Daryl is a really good guy, mm-hmm. and and he is an absolute anarchist. Uh, yeah, I would say that. I mean, he's he's very very pure. Voting is rigged. Right. No, it's not that bad. Yeah, I know, but I mean that's um, that brand, that strain, or yeah. who his coalition, the Dar- man who needs a microphone. Yeah, Daryl Perry is definitely another person you got to look up. Uh, mm-hmm. Does uh, various podcasts, writing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, does but, books, reprints books. But f- I think for a lot of delegates, Gary Johnson is going to be the 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 favorite son because he did a great job uh, four years ago. You want somebody who is a credible... You want somebody who is going to appeal to a Greg Lenz. Somebody who looks at it and goes, Listen, I don't know if I can support this guy. I'm a Republican. Or I'm a Democrat. I don't think I could vote for Hillary. I can't vote for a neocon anymore. <clears throat> right. And so, you know, Gary, Gary appeals to Democrats in terms of his uh, drug... Legalized drugs. Um, criminal justice reform. He's pro-choice. Uh, and then on the on the Republican side, he is the person who has vetoed in the in the eight years he was governor. He vetoed more bills than all 50, 49 other governors combined. Over 420 pieces of legislation came to his desk, and he vetoed or used a line item veto on 249. Yeah. That is wicked. Yeah. And he left New Mexico without a lot of revenues. With a billion dollar surplus, yeah, that is freakish. So he he just has the experience. He's got the the personal wealth because he started a handyman business and built it into one of the largest private contractors in the Southwest, and uh, sold the business. And then you know is personally wealthy because of his hard work, and is somebody that you know he's got private he's got private uh, sector executive experience. And he's got the executive experience with the governorship, you know, and, you know, he talks about it in interviews and in the interviews posted in that podcast feed. Listen, I went to the Libertarian Party in the early 90s when I thought about running for office and it just was clear that I wasn't going to get elected as a Libertarian. And so I ran as a Republican, but I've been a card carrying member for a very long time. And he, he, we don't have the bar problem. Where it looks like, all right, you're just trying to use us for yeah. ballot access. You have, like, the best situation on earth. Yeah. You have, I mean, in an election where people are really, where I think there's probably an, un, right now it feels like there's an unfound group of deserted voters. Okay. Yeah. And they're going to sure. look at it and they're gonna say, all right, if I took away the party labels, there is a one-term senator from New York that was a former first lady that failed on health care implementation, never authored a piece of legislation in her time in the Senate, was ran for president the entire time there, uh, voted for the Iraq War, um, and a Secretary of State saw a U.S. ambassador be killed. Absolute unrest, uh, complete social unrest in the Middle East, and a total changing of the guard for U.S. foreign policy. You could, I mean, realistically, Crimea was seized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's not an impressive track record. Then, well, you say, oh, but she's the first woman. Well. She's married to a guy that uh, clearly that it's not the first woman, <laughs> uh, and won't be the last yeah. one. Then, then you look at Gary Johnson. You say two-term elected governor of New Mexico, um, a guy that is independently wealthy, like Chris said, that built JW Enterprises from a one-man truck handyman shop while he was in college to pay through school, and then sold it as independently wealthy. He rejected the establishment Republican Party in New Mexico, a state where it's two to one registered Democrats and Republicans. Mm-hmm and resoundingly won, um, and they said there's no way he'll be able to do it. He doesn't have any government, government experience. He's a CEO, an outsider. He has not no contacts. You know, he's idealistic, and he comes in and just starts rejecting bill after bill after bill after bill after bill. After bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he really did. He he was able to spin libertarianism populously, like as a populist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I contend it is because it's about the equal application of everything. So that it's inherently, you know, a populist. It's just rarely spun that way. Right. Mm-hmm. But then he gets reelected against a Hispanic in a state with 61% mm-hmm. Hispanic voters, and beats a popular mayor from Albuquerque. Like the guy is just excellent. At everything he does. He's also a really good person. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time with him in 2012. I mean, I think I've told on the in past episodes, you know, uh, the one with Sam where. He had just been nominated president, and he was our nominee for 2012, and walked into the back of the banquet room celebrating his victory. 
wasn't really sure where to go, and so he sat down at the back table with Sam and I, and just sat there and had dinner with Sam and I and, and his fiance and he kissed the ring. Well, yes, well, <laughs> the, I speak for all the how, how did he get by all your securities? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, clear. yeah, where was Sam during this? But I was so tired of signing autographs. I mean, how many times do I have to sign your book here? You, so I know you get extra money. Have you heard of Bastiat? Let me recommend this to you, Gary. Uh, but he just he's he's got celiac disease. He's not one of those fake gluten people. He really can't eat gluten. It's not a diet, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but he, he's just a, he's an extraordinary person on all levels. And, you know, he is somebody that I can confidently say, sometimes you say, yeah, vote for that libertarian, knowing that if that person gets elected, they can't really do the job very effectively. Uh, especially a job as big and as tough as president of the United States. Gary could go and kick ass as president. He's more, he would be better prepared than Ron Paul by far. Absolutely. I mean, I, I know that hurts a lot of people's, you know, because Ron Paul's God, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, Gary. He was 80. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the difference between an executive and a senator is the executive starts from, I was elected to do a job. I have to spin my message from what I have to do. Mm -hmm. A senator, a, you know, a congressman gets to start from, this is what I believe. There are no repercussions for me being a martyr. <laughs> yada, yada, you know, right. but then they don't have to go and make sure that no one sucks at one of their bureaus and they get in a political scandal, even mm -hmm. through lack of oversight. It's also yeah. managing, which he has the skills on the business. The, uh, business yeah. Side. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he, he's just the best qualified person that we've ever had running as president. He is a libertarian. He attracts people to the party on the I side with that con quiz. It's taken by like 3 million people in 2012, and he was the overwhelming favorite. So if people just voted on issues, if you walked into the ballot box and selected <laughs> issues, Gary Johnson would have been our president, and not Barack Obama or Mitt Romney. But then you're running out of Bernie Sanders, and then poor people in great right. corporations, and then it's like, oh! So go check, take, go take the isidewith.com quiz, see where you fall. I was 89% with Gary Johnson and 69% with Donald Trump. 68 with Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. 68 with Bernie Sanders. 67 with Ted Cruz. 33% with Hillary Clinton. So those those were my results. Damn, you're a third evil. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> now, now, like, did, no. you are going to be obviously voting for the Donald. No, 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 no. Oh, you know? No, no. What? Now I'm confused because you're his greatest supporter that I know. No, I That's support... why you're here. I support the man. And I love the show. I, I, I find it hilarious. Yeah. And because he's destroying single handedly the politics, all politics. He's changed every rule that's ever been written. It's just amazing. We're witnessing history right now. I don't know if you. Let, before we move on to the Donald, because I have very concise and well thought out thoughts because I know I've been you obsessed do. with them for we, two weeks. We've talked about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Austin Peterson is, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I like Austin. I worked with him in 2010 when he was the volunteer coordinator for the National Party. I was the executive director of the Libertarian Party of Indiana. Uh, I found him to be very competent, very likable. I've run into him a couple times at events. He's a very likable guy. I've heard through the grapevine that he's an arrogant douche. But when I hear that from women, though. Yeah, but when your online persona is arrogant douche, of course, people are going to kind of say that about you. But I've always liked Austin. And I think that, you know, he was John Stossel's producer. He's, he runs Libertarian Republic, which is a great website, a website that we like and, and recommend and have talked about on the podcast Love before. Um, you know, he is, he is somebody that can communicate the Libertarian message. Uh, I, I don't know who his buddy Tony Styles is, honestly. I, know, I guess he's some sort of Libertarian celebrity that I have missed. You don't um, know a celebritarian? I guess. I don't know. I feel like they just pop up out of nowhere all the time now. They yeah. have to kiss the ring before they get that title? Yeah. No. I mean, I, I, uh, I've been accused <laughs> today and every other day for the last eight years of being the official voice of libertarianism, but that is not the case. You didn't ask for it. It was granted to you. So uh, Nick Sarwak uh, is the National Libertarian Chair, the, the Reince Priebus, Debbie Wasserman Schultz of the Libertarian Party, essentially. And... Uh, the way that the Facebook runs on the Libertarian Party is it's uh, orchestrated by the vice chair, a guy named Arvind Vahora, and a group of volunteers, and they have a Facebook group, and they generate content in this group and work it out and post stuff, and uh, it's, a, it's a very collaborative effort as opposed to just putting all the work on one person. And, and it also makes sure that there's a balanced view that goes on to the Facebook page, and it's kind of checks and balances for the Libertarian Party. Someone posted some independent political report 
which is just an absolute sewer of uh, it's a meme sewer it's, it's, it's not even a meme written sewer word. it's just it's like 10 libertarians that love to get on there and talk about uh, just have flame wars basically it's but unfortunately it is the only place that a lot of libertarian party news is posted in terms of what's going on at the lnc and so a lot of people go to it and it's just a bad first impression for a lot of people yeah it's really like a, an insider's digest so, uh, I mean, really. truthfully, a lot of what we're trying to do is give you names so then you can go and look up uh, Nick Sarwak, or you can go and look up what's happening. You know who Sam Goldstein is and why he's running for vice chair. You you know, you know about McAfee, Peterson, and Gary Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to offer you uh, a, a different point of view, one that's a little more fair. And Nick is a great guy. Like, I remember him in person, but he loves making fun of Brett Bittner. And if you like to make fun of Brett Bittner, you're a friend yeah. of mine. Uh, Sarwak, <laughs> okay. so... Sarwak's, yeah. dis yeah. Sarwak's disgrace is uh, nominating Noda at the 2012 convention in Las Vegas, which led to Mark Rutherford, my dear friend, uh, losing the n chairs race by two votes. One vote. Yeah, it was one, one vote. vote. Yeah. And a guy went on vacation? He, well, yeah, it was one person, <laughs> one person from Indiana went and visited her sister. Yeah. And had she been there, Mark would have been elected chair because he got 50%, and you had to have 50 plus one. And all I'd like to have seen Austin Peterson try to do to Mark what he's trying to do to Nick's. Nick's... Nick will take it. Mark would have probably issued a hit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark, okay. Mark, oh, Ruth, guy. Mark Rutherford is running for chair, uh, as you may have seen on WeAreLibertarians.com. And uh, you've heard him on this program before. He is challenging Nick Sarwak, the current chair. And uh, Austin Peterson uh, took this link that was a Gary Johnson link and spun it out of proportions and... Uh, made it sound like he's the outsider of the party and the establishment Facebook page of the Libertarian Party. I wonder where is, he got that idea. Right. Yeah. Is is not... I mean, he's basically running a, a presidential campaign where he is attacking the Republican... The, attacking the Libertarian Party for having... A, a, being establishment. And he's the anti-establishment candidate of the anti-establishment party. And it's so silly. Like, we, we talked about this with Wallace last week. You, you can't be... an anti there is no establishment in the libertarian party like you've heard us talk in the past few episodes of we have we as we have discussed the libertarian party if you want to be the libertarian party establishment like show up to a meeting and you're it yeah that's, yeah, that's the thing it's the people who care enough to show up and donate their time right it, there is a there aren't kingmakers there are a group of committed people who want to protect uh the brand but i think that you know there, that's why a lot of republicans are freaking out about donald trump they don't feel he's a conservative. And they won't have access. That's the killer. In a, yeah. in a town run on access and influence, yeah. they are shut out. I don't I don't buy that. I think he's the ultimate insider playing outsider. I mean, here's a guy who is... But we'll get into him later. I mean, he's... But more than anything, he is... In the eyes of National Review and a lot of other groups, he's not a conservative. Uh, and so they, they ideologically don't like Donald Trump. Austin Peterson is, uh, so in an effort to stick it to the Libertarian Party, he put the phone number of the national chairman out on Facebook. That sounds well, familiar. His, well, his, yeah, I know, it's really shameful. Yeah, isn't that a horrible thing to do to somebody, Chris? I know, that's kind of why my post was ironic today, because I, I did that to you. <laughs> but, I mean, um, fix to you. Uh, no. I, guarantee, I guarantee you, because, uh, anyways, so, <laughs> I'll, I'll finish that thought in a minute, but... Tony Stiles, I guess, tweeted it out saying, let the chairman know that this is unfair, basically asking their supporters to harass the national chairman, who was not responsible for the post and had nothing to do with it. And then, uh, you know, Peterson endorsed it by, by reposting it. Yeah. And so I just... I wrote he was a, trying to create a, uh, you know, a quote-unquote shitstorm. Right. Exactly, yeah. uh, and not violate the INAP. It does. I'm sorry. The, the INAP. INAP. It's <laughs> it's yeah. just it's exactly. just asking. Yeah. It's encouraging your people to harass somebody, and when you're in a delegate fight, and I made a post on We Are Libertarians, which turned into a giant shitstorm. Uh, on you, purpose. March 17th. Well, I mean, listen, got a lot of likes out of it. A lot of people discovered We Are Libertarians through it. Um, so I can't be uh, that upset about it. Turnabout's fair play. But I basically said, listen, I like Austin, but this is a childish and immature thing for a, a person who wants to represent the party. And it's also, uh, it's also ineffective because you're trying to win delegates. And as we discussed last week, when you're in a delegate fight, 
It's about winning friends and influencing yeah. people. You can't go out and say on our Facebook page that libertarians are a bunch of losers like Austin did. You know, you're trying to win over people to to you're asking people to you're asking a thousand people delegates to support you, you know, it's and hard enough to get them out to vote, let alone uh, right, call them a dickhead. <laughs> right, you know? you're tarnishing the vessel you want to take you into a presidential race. Right, that's a terrible strategy. It, it Look just, at this awful thing, and then you ride in the parade to the presidency. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> no. you know, and harassing the the person who has enough friends in the party, and, and it's not friends, but enough support, enough consensus within the party that because he's been around long enough call you know harassing him doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense you know i'm not saying that you have to it, it, listen we time and time again here and we are libertarians raise issues like this like i like austin personally i'm glad that he's running for president i think that austin is an effective messenger of libertarianism and i'm glad that he's bringing people into the party i think this particular move was a dick move and so you know, we oftentimes will be critical and raise issues and say, here's, here's the problem. Uh, you can certainly do that, and, and that's, there's ways to do that. But when you're just, like, flaring, uh, creating flame wars, and that is how you're trying to drive your message to the presidency, that works for Donald Trump, but that doesn't work in the Libertarian Party and, and when you're trying to win delegates. Especially the messaging difference. Yeah, because like some of them is like trying to mimic almost like a meta James Neese, but, like, doing it yeah. all wrong. And you don't have that kind of swag. Yeah. Like, he, he was one of the original people on 4chan, bro. Mm -hmm. You, can't, you yeah. can't run that kind of campaign. and yeah. It's counterproductive. James and, was, not. Yeah. Not yeah. Him, yeah. No, and I, yeah, I probably, well, the way he's acting, I don't know. He could have been. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, you know, the way he's acting, and Austin, I, I, like, I really do like where he's at philosophically, because Austin brings an approach to libertarianism that is global and not educational. Mm -hmm. He is in... He applies libertarianism to the current events in the world, which is something we try to do. Yeah, and that is rare in libertarian uh, in the libertarian circles. And Gary, Gary can handle it, but Gary sticks to educational really, and he picks two or three core issues, and then really tries tries to form a coalition around that and, and get into air, um, voting blocks in areas where he thinks he can peel people off. Right, and then McAfee is just the true. I, uh, he's interesting, I he, guess, he and, hates, and he's well he hates behaved. The, he hates the government, wants to do something about it. Oh, right, yeah, he and then he's also yeah. only right now in a post Snowden world is he relevant. Right. You know, his expertise could never could not be any more relevant, especially to libertarianism yeah. and constitutional republicanism. He is your guy, and I think a ticket of him and uh, Johnson and then McAfee at the two. Yeah, that's man. Cool. You have expertise that doesn't exist in either party if you put. All the rest of the elected representatives together. So yeah, two really smart guys. Yeah, you know. so <laughs> and accomplished and effective. Oh yeah. So so I guess my post was not meant to be uh, mean to Austin or as some of the the, the non thinking commenters in that post um, who exercise their little brains just enough to type a comment but not actually think while doing it. Um, I'm not being critical of Austin saying he's not welcome in the Libertarian Party. Uh, he certainly is. He was hired by the Libertarian Party. I liked working with him. I read his stuff, you know, and I'm not the type of person who is that that small tent person. I just think that this was a dick move. And, you know, I, I think a lot of what's going on right now is there are people within the party doing things that are just not cool. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have developed a voice here and just say, listen, it, it, that kind of people don't call others out because they're afraid of it or they send messages in private and that doesn't work mm -hmm. like you know what put him on blast because that's what he likes that's what he wants he wants the fight austin oh, yeah. wants it i'm sure this yeah. will get promoted on his facebook page <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, and i would love to have austin on i'd like yeah. to have gary and john mcafee and austin on you know i wish we could do a, a debate but i know john stossel is going to do a better one than we will and that only exists because of austin like he doesn't get enough credit for that. But he is the Absolutely. reason there is a presidential debate on Fox because Austin beat it. Austin, Austin, Peterson. Austin Peterson was John Stossel's producer, and uh, he he is the reason there's a debate, and he should get a ton of credit for it. Yes. You know, um, I, I certainly think that Austin should be heard. 
when you see criticism, it, we've got all kinds of comments about infighting. This is politics. No one's paying attention. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> I can't see or I mean, anything. You know how hard it is to get get libertarian messaging in front of committed conservative or Republicans and Democrats, right. and even get them to pay attention, unless you're mocking the side they're mocking. Yeah. yeah. It's in, they're not watching. Like, I, the only people that are watching are libertarians or yeah. even committed libertarians. Right. Yeah. I have taken a lot of shit over the last three months for causing infighting. And let me say this right now. The Libertarian Party and Libertarian politics is politics. And if you have a problem with politics, then you shouldn't get involved. Go write a book. Because <laughs> politics involves politics. And that means that people will have disagreements. And that means that people will talk about other people publicly. And just because you feel uncomfortable and things make you uncomfortable, it doesn't mean that I'm some sort of villain. Well, the Libertarian Party has been a safe space for right. infighting for years. Yeah. And now it's you know being introduced and getting enough exposure and enough people with... Uh, it's getting some philosophical diversity that hasn't existed. And some more pragmatic types that are really you know Rand Paul Libertarians that are now saying, this is counterproductive and you're going to lose. Here's how you should do it. Right. This is how it's been done before. Mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the Jim yeah. Wallace stuff that we've, we talked about last week... I got a lot of criticism saying I shouldn't have, I should have just been quiet. You know, I shouldn't have brought it up. And that's exactly the problem, is that it looks like infighting if you bring it up. And, and then people, it's a, it's a self-esteem problem that libertarians have. They don't want to talk about the elephant in the room, uh, and they don't want to have discussions or arguments. You know, I have, ne I have not done anything online that is vitriolic. Unfair, you posted untrue. My cell phone number but that's because you're my friend, so I can, <laughs> I can treat you like shit. I know, I'm kidding. But when it comes down to a person that I have a disagreement with, I treat them with a lot of respect. It's just my friends I treat like crap. Um, because I have given you permission to make memes where I'm effing Justin Bieber from behind. You know what I mean? Right. No, I totally get it. Right. You know, that, the harder you wrestle somebody, the better, the closer friend you are. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, think. But, I, but, so there's this thing where if there's, if there's disagreements or these flame wars on Facebook or whatever, a Republican's just going to go, uh, one of these disaffected Republicans is going to go, well, they're just no better than the Republicans. They're no better than the Democrats. Mm. You know what? I'm sorry your sensitive little pussy eyes got offended by seeing a, a, a heated discussion on Facebook. If you're that stupid and obtuse that you see arguments on Facebook and then decide that all libertarians and every person who votes or organizes within the Libertarian Party is that way, then you're an idiot. Because there is a ton of groupthink that goes on with libertarians. They're just as collectivist as the other parties. Because they associate... Greg and I are not the same person. No. Just because I say some shitty stuff about somebody doesn't mean that Greg agrees. No, I mean, I'll back you up publicly no matter what. Right. And I'll be like, what were you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It, it's just... It boggles my mind. Like, there was an event where... Oh, well, I hope nobody's... You guys aren't going to be mean to the candidates there. Because you're mean to Jim Wallace. It's a vetting... It's a vetting process. Are yeah. You, wait, 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 wait. It, it's I like promise I won't shove his head into a wall and spit on his kid. Yeah. But it's like family being mean to each other. It's what people do. Well, They're it, not like deep it's schisms. Not, it's not even like mean. Like it's forming like splinter groups. You're, you're, we're now at a point in our growth where people are vetting candidates in public. Yeah. Well, I think the, the... As far as all of us, because we've been... We've had, held the libertarian ideas for some time, is we understand the core values of libertarianism. We're not trying to debate what libertarian, what we should be doing. Whether the NAP is valid or not. Yeah, I, I think it's more just tinier, petty things, and then people look at that and see, oh, well, they're bickering and all this. And as far as libertarians go who are running for office against another libertarian, I, just, I don't understand the shit spewing between candidates because at the core you all have the same values, I would hope, but you're running to get elected. You're not, you're not running against... You see what I'm saying? No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. You know, and the fact that you most elected, you built a platform that now attracts outside parties who have never considered it before, yeah. mm -hmm. and they may or may not be as philosophically pure as what you're used to. But when you're coming from, let's say, a Republican Party and looking in on a Libertarian, that I mean, that looks like because I see the, I see the arguments all the time, and I'm just like, well, this is just Facebook. Yeah. 
Because you're a, you're a thinking because, person. But yeah, because I'm used to. I'm not taking it at face value. I I can see through it and what the what the main Tiger, argument Tyler's is. Tyler's over there memeing the, that person's face I, on the heaviest things we carry are feels. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I'm just on Facebook to piss people off. Yeah, I don't. it's the internet, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not real. It's not life. real. I wish people would just wish so many people would just stay off the internet. I know. The, yeah, the internet was so much the, better. Remember when you had to actually like. Log on. Yeah. It, 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 it also and all these stupid it also is in the AOL box was all so much better. Yeah. It it also is partly the the problem with positioning yourself as the anti-establishment candidate and you're running against the Libertarian Party. You just all you do is set everybody up for failure because you're probably not going to win, which is why you chose that tack. And then your supporters are just going to feel unwelcome the second you get any criticism or when you don't win the nomination. You know, so you really do everybody a disservice. And secondly, libertarians, uh, libertarian party people should not hold themselves up as the ethical ideal. I mean, libertarian candidates, by and large, are more ethical. They are more willing to, to be civil and thoughtful and discuss ideas. Unless but, it's... Unless it's Bernie Sanders sometimes. <laughs> right. But th this is still human beings trying to interact with each other, and especially on Facebook where it's uh, it, not not personal at all. I mean, you're, you're totally removed from somebody. It's why we drive aggressively. Do you know why we gr drive aggressively? Because you are not... You are not road raging with another human being. You're not recognizing their empathy. Your brain is arguing with a car. I don't you know? hear that she is having a heart attack and in the right lane. She right. needs to get out of it so I can get to the office. Right. <laughs> You're arguing with a cat profile picture. Yeah. Right. right. Which yeah. is even more fun. You guys are the worst drivers out there. I drive you know, very defensively. I drive like I'm in the middle of a NASCAR race. I'm trying to finish the race, get points. Not exactly win, just enough points so I get ready for the chase. And then I win, you know. Yeah. You know this way I get more sponsorship. Damn. Then you so, win the Winston-Salem Cup. Oh, dang, that's a good one. So I guess I don't understand my own point qu quite, <laughs> but I guess, I, I guess I'm probably kind of going, give libertarians a little bit of a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're, it is such a, um, a weird thing that I have seen over the years where it's like, well, the Libertarian Party is just, you're just trying to find any kind of excuse to not join and not do hard work. And so you give yourself an excuse by saying, oh, they're not X, so I'm walking away. Really, that's just be you being a lazy jerk oh. and not recognizing that if you show up and you work hard, you are the libertarian establishment. You know, and Austin... Now you're a target. Austin Peters, uh, Peterson is not the anti... He's not the anti-establishment. The dude collected a paycheck from the party at one point. You know, and... <laughs> they and, bought him. Right. They own him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that to be a dick. I'm just saying, like, he's positioning himself and it's not the truth. The truth is, you show up, you be decent to people, you're part of the quote-unquote establishment. And the reality of the situation is this, is he is a libertarian Republican that is running for the LP nomination, right? Yeah. There isn't, like, you know, he, I feel a lot of what he's doing is trying to, in a way, replicate what either Ted Cruz or Donald Trump slightly doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. To um, har or to um, harness outsider, angry, estab or, you know, at the establishment and channel that into change within, you know, a new vessel. The reality is, though, you're not going to pull away a bunch of Republicans to join the LP, vote for you as a delegation. Well, mm -hmm. did you see the news story today? No. About the secret meeting that might pledge quite a bit of money to third parties? Who? To stop Trump? Wow. Yeah, but I that's, but that's great. money. No one's going to throw no. away the Republican But join the party membership. to become delegates. Yeah. Well, no one's going to throw you, away the Because that, that's what matters. It, we also talk, yeah, I mean, the Libertarian Party, part of why we're discussing this is is to continuing to talk about what goes on in the Libertarian Party so you have an idea. It's all delegate-based. Mm -hmm. It is it is not the same messaging. It's not the same tactics that you would use uh, as, as you would if you were running in a primary. Right. You know, there are primaries. Austin Peterson won Missouri. Yeah. Uh, Gary Johnson was not on the ballot there. Gary Johnson won North Carolina, um, you know, and and Austin's home state is Missouri. Uh, so did win Colorado. Austin Peterson did not win Colorado. Who won? Who won? McAfee did he or no? I think what? I think it was McAfee. I would think. Uh, he, but but Austin Peterson wasn't on the ballot in Colorado because they don't uh, see his. Uh, 
uh, membership that's valid because he didn't sign up for the uh, NAP. Yeah, he won't sign the pledge. Oh yeah, okay. like me. Like I, I joined because this is relevant to me. I joined to support a guy I really believe in and think is the best choice in the governor's race for Indiana. And the Indiana LPIN is exceptional. Like they're incredibly great people. They're well organized. Absolutely. They're committed as all hell because they don't get any. I mean, you don't. You did it. You don't get any thanks ever. No. And if you I don't, do, I do now three years later. Right, because they, they never understood what they had, and then it's like, what do you mean? There's this doesn't exist. It used to. Like yeah, but that was on Windows XP ninety five. Never, right. you know, no one right. updated it because no one knew to. Right. You know, and so. No, seriously, like, that, that, that's, like lists and voter data and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, but that's the reality of the situation is you are the establishment if you show up, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're there and donating your time, you are the bush. You're Jeb. Yeah. Yep. And then with Austin, though, like, Austin's not, Austin's probably not going to hang around the LP. He, he didn't. After he stopped I, working for them, he didn't show up. I mean, I saw him at ISFL, uh, Students for Liberty Conference. Uh, but I didn't see him at the National Libertarian Conventions. You know, he, he hasn't been going out and speaking. His friend Tony Stiles has, has spoken at Libertarian Conventions. You know, so I just don't... And I'm not saying that that's a, a smear against him. I'm just saying it's, it's, like, it's different in the Libertarian Party because it is a delegate race. It is not... It's a political party. Because yes. Gary Johnson, uh, John McAfee... And Austin Peterson all won primaries. That doesn't mean shit, right. because it doesn't go to the convention. What happens is you go to the convention, you're given some tokens. If you get enough tokens, then you're on the ballot for for the delegates to vote. Uh, delegates are, can, you know, you go into a back room and you pick. No, that's that's <laughs> no. What happens is this is why the the GOP could never take us over. It's because the delegates are selected at state conventions. Yeah. When we go to the Indiana uh, convention, I will say I won't be there. Don't don't select me, you know. And then we get a certain number of delegates. It's anywhere from twenty to forty, depending on certain formulas. And then the twenty or forty people who are going uh, get selected as the official delegates of Indiana. And then uh, there's alternates, and then we try to get those alternates sat in other delegations that might not have all of the, their delegates filled. So Indiana will sometimes, because we could get so many people there, we'll get people placed in Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Illinois delegations. So because the goal is if somebody's going to spend the time and money to go, they should be able to vote if they can. Mm -hmm. um, and it's up to the Georgia convention to say, yeah, it's cool if little Brett Bittner is a delegate for us. <laughs> That's know? never cool. Right. So, so now, like, is that with two Ds? Little. L-I-D-D-L-E, -L -L -E, <laughs> which was the craziest shit I've ever heard Trump say. Uh, uh, and so you, that, that's how it works. And so the, the delegates, the people voting for president, they show up and then there's a secret ballot. And then, um, you know, you win states and delegates and then it, it's, so it's, it's just not the same. Like it's, there, so when you're dealing with a delegate situation, your whole goal is to th think about the people that are going to be selected to be delegates <laughs> at any convention, a state convention for the Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, any party. It is the people who are the most committed to the Libertarian Party, the people who have been there for a long time and putting a lot of sweat into it. A lot of times, this is their hobby. These are not... Kingmakers, okay? These are people who work jobs in warehouses and are hardworking blue collar guys or are accountants or uh, they just, this is their hobby. This is the thing that they do in their free time. They go out, they work fairs, they. They spend their own money. They budgets. spend oh, all yeah. of the their own money. Barely gets a travel budget. Yeah. And barely. Then, a no the national party. The national party. Mm -hmm. Literally, there are probably 20 paid professionals in the libertarian party across the nation at every level and most of them are part-time contractors yes mm -hmm. and the the people that are showing up are not the establishment these are <laughs> hard-working good people who have spent their whole lives dedicated to growing the libertarian party so that you my friends double up double up have a third <laughs> choice on your ballot and so when you go out and you rail against the party as as your anti-establishment you're actually shoving your finger in the, those people's eyes, and you come across as a giant dick, and you get to the convention and realize, 
oh wait, maybe I don't have enough tokens. You know, because you don't know how the process worked. Yeah. People you know, think it's easy just, you know, check go in and check a box. No. Vote, voting day, you know. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm ready for libertarianism. Yeah. No more roads. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> elect me. I, I don't think people realize how involved the process oh, actually is. Because there's right. rules to play by. I know libertarians don't like rules. And when you're a volunteer, it. you don't love it when an outsider comes in and says, here's how you should be doing it better, and this is why you're done. Right. I mean, it, <laughs> even if that person was John Stossel's producer, like, there's... You know, it's sweat that, equity matters. There's just sweat. a level of yeah. respect Bring, that people, yeah. The, and and this is the problem. The reason that I think that these guys are not showing uh, enough respect to to the delegates is that they don't know them. They don't understand the people that they're that they're actually besmirching. You know, and they're counting on people not seeing their. You know, I just continually hear. You know, this campaign blocked me because it's like a troll campaign. It's, you know, it just, it's, it, it's just disheartening, you know, especially. So sad, though, right. Yeah. And I'm not trying, I, I mean, I guess it comes across like I'm smearing Austin in the campaign. No, because he is, a, but, he benefits Liberty huge. I mean, his yeah, contribution just, with the Stossel debate is arguably bigger, more of a contribution than anyone's done, period. I, I yeah, I, I guess I'd wish, I I just don't have the chance to sit down with him, and it's, I'm kind of venting my frustration because I know the guy, and I know that, like he's sharp, he's a great like, messenger. That that kind of thing, it just it doesn't, it just is mean, you know. And listen, I know I'm mean, and I know I'm sarcastic, and I know I'm a troll. But it's to Republicans and Democrats that are well paid and well fed. And to my <laughs> friends. Yeah. You know, but the people like Greg Noland, who is the Madison County Chair, who has done this for 15 years and puts his heart and soul into three or four big events every year to raise 2000 bucks for his county party, uh, who goes, who spends thousands of dollars of his own money going to these kind of events, you know, when he's not a wealthy guy, he drives an early 2000s Saturn. You know, and but he's just passionate, and he never has help. You know, he's got candidates and he's got people that come in and out, but by and large, he's the county party. That's the establishment, and you know, to to look that guy in the eye and call him a loser, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to do it. So why would you do it online? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I I don't know. I just it's that's the Libertarian Party. The Libertarian Party is grassroots. And and when these people come in and they, yeah, when they come in and they just yeah. say like, well, all the Libertarian Party is I'm all this infighting, blah blah blah. It's like you don't know you don't know what you're talking about, you know. You're here, just I mean here in Indiana, which is exceptionally well organized, you have to put your own money forward to get matched for your signs for your own race in your right. own district. I mean that isn't the like he's treating the Libertarian Party in this race like he can model existing current relevant election styles and it will apply and people will say oh look someone's sticking it to the you know when the reality is one no one's paying attention mm -hmm. there's no coalition you're gonna you're not gonna bring over 30 percent of democrats because you're pro-union mm -hmm. that doesn't exist in the lp delegate yeah. race and two you're you're, you're you're sabotaging yourself because you're excellent in so many ways austin like right. you uh, you are so credible you're young you won the debate. I haven't met, talked to anyone that said he has he lost the debate. Everyone right. said he won, but it's Gary Johnson and John McAfee. You're Stossel's former field producer, which is huge in a traditionally like libertarian race. Mm -hmm. This is Gary Johnson, a two-term elected Republican governor, Governor Beto, and then the guy whose antivirus software is, is named after him. It's like the most well recognized outside of Norton that exists. Right. Prefer it fast, though. Don't go back to be about the same as it was in the no, Right after he left. Yeah. You're such like, a technology you hipster. Get it you know, I just want you to say one time that, you know, something I like that's normal is good. <laughs> you racist. This beer that I'm drinking is pretty good, uh, even though it has 210 calories. Uh, <laughs> twice the alcohol, though. Yeah, twice the alcohol, that. though. But, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, Austin Peterson, well, bring up Daryl W. Perry, barely got four votes more than Daryl W. Perry. Like, yeah. he was nowhere, Daryl W. Perry was nowhere close of Austin, of, uh, um, not Austin Peterson, but uh, McAfee and Gary Johnson, but he, like, barely beat Daryl W. Perry, right. who doesn't even have the type of, you know, 
resources as uh, uh, Austin Peterson. His philosophical stance is that he doesn't want to win the election because that would be aggression against others and telling people how to live. Yeah. Bingo. And yet he still got more delegates. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, he got close. So De close. Yeah, three, four votes. The guy four, four, who's four, running four. as a kamikaze mm -hmm. tied, and it's because you have to appreciate the effort people put in if you want to exploit the platform. But Daryl is also somebody that is well known. Mm -hmm. You know, he lives in New Hampshire. He comes to every convention. He comes to, I mean, he is a guy that does, he writes books, he does podcasts, he has a publishing company. You know, he is a guy who is deeply passionate about liberty and libertarianism. And is, yeah, but, <laughs> right. Uh, and it's just so <laughs> ridiculous. It's just insane. It's uh, And we don't want to harp on this too much, but we do want to right give now. a voice to the people who are being called losers and don't deserve it at all because all they do is volunteer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's behavior like that that creates distrust, especially if Austin were to form a little coalition. People say, what's the point? I'm a loser. I don't want to go help this guy win. He comes well, off in it for himself other than for the party. Mm -hmm. Like, build name ID. But you know what? That's the problem is if deep down your motivation is just to build name ID for your personal brand, do you really want your personal brand to be uh, <laughs> divisive and mean and awful? Like, well, like people forget. I guess that's I, something I, you and I ought to sit down and talk about, Greg. We ought to think about how we come off. I look, I but, look at it. Right? We're long, accountable. Long we hold people accountable. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I look at it as a long-term right. shot. That's what he's looking at. Right, and that's part of my problem with Donald Trump, is Donald Trump is not thinking about how things will, you know, Donald Trump thinks short-term because he, like Joe Scarborough said recently on an interview, I think it was on uh, With All Due Respect, which is a fantastic show. It airs on Bloomberg TV, also replays at 6 p.m. on MSNBC, it's on the Bloomberg TV app. It's by Mark Halperin and uh, the, uh, John Heil. John Heil, yeah. the guys yeah. that do the circus on Showtime, which is a fantastic show. Great show. Uh, they wrote the book Game Change. It's it's a fantastic show. It just it really kind of gives you a good perspective into what establishment media huh, is thinking, and you know, and, podcast establishment is that what we are? right? <laughs> And I love it. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get together with Tom Woods and Jason Stapleton and have our monthly establishment meeting. Talk about how we're going to keep out all these upstart podcasters. Right. I, them down. I got to buy this week or month. Yeah. But, uh, so we what gotta, you're basically saying for the last few minutes, you guys are basically just trying to give a voice to the voiceless of the quote-unquote losers out there, or just telling them thank you, because they have thankless jobs. Yeah, yes, thank absolutely. You. Yeah, if you're you. one of those grassroots people out there doing the work, like, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, if you're in the Republican Party and you are trying to change the party from the inside, if you're doing... Uh, if you're a Bernie Democrat supporter and you listen to this podcast because you identify with libertarian values and you're working hard and you're out there trying to make a difference, we appreciate you and thank you. Yes. You know, yeah. and and our critiques of Austin are what you're doing isn't working and it's going to ensure you lose and burn bridges in the event you ever pursue it again. Do it well. You have the opportunity to to be successful, to represent libertarianism well, and libertarian the brand of restraint of libertarian republicanism why in the in the name of creating a shitstorm would you give up the long-term opportunity of being a real brand ambassador even far surpassing because of your media access of gary johnson yeah why would you want to burn bridges why would you want to make an enemy of people of anyone like if you're if you're trying to, if you're building a media company you know and i have to really try at this because i have a confrontational personality lately like i, I you know, I will call one a, guy rustles your jimmies. I will call a listener stupid on the Facebook page. I did it earlier. Um, sorry. You know, but if you're trying to build a media company, by and large, you want to be likable and you want people to like you and you want people to want to listen to your product because you're a pleasant person. Like it doesn't work if you're trying to like. If you just troll, you're never serious, right? Right. Like so, you can you can you need to pick a side, you know, and you need to say this is what I stand for, but at the same time. You know, don't bend over backwards and be, you know, oh, well, I understand. Come, just give us a list, of, you know, and then allow them to wreck it for your existing listeners. Yeah. You know, you do have to ostracize and villainize the, the person that's ruining it for your diehard fans. We need to get together and we need to keep uh, the Lava Flow podcast and the Unallowable Opinion podcast. Never heard of either of those. What are those? I know. We it's need a to podcast. keep. We need to keep yeah. them out. Is this a podcast? Uh, but that's my problem with. Uh, so Jarrah Scarborough was talking about uh, on, on with all due respect about uh, Trump being a day trader, 
of politics. And so in the short term, it absolutely benefits him to be brash and say things and not, uh, not disallow certain things. In the short term, it helps him, but he doesn't realize in the long term, because of his inexperience in politics, that a lot of this stuff is going to come back and bite him in the ass. I think this week there was an ad that I think we posted on the Facebook page, uh, but I'm sure you've seen it by now. You, you can go and, and search for it. But it was a pack that took his words about women and two women and had regular women read the, the words, and it's pretty harmful to Trump. And, and it felt like for the first time that Trump's uh, Teflon, so to speak, Started to start. It started Depending to wear off. Five states. Yeah, he's. I'm the telling people you, he's hurting are the John Kasich Republicans. The the media cycle, the the establishment media, and the establishment Republicans will do everything. They haven't even turned on the switch of money. They haven't even thirty five million. They, in they haven't. They just started though. They haven't even begun to swift boat him. <laughs> thirty five. Well, they, they better do it quick. State. They better do it quick. Thirty-five million in one state is incredible. In what time span? Two weeks. Yeah. All right, that's a lot. Any one Florida, but I mean, Rubio got two percent. Yeah. He basically sent him back to Cuba on a raft. <laughs> I mean, tired. It was horrible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the thing is that people, and I've been telling this forever. They've been pissed off for eight years. Yep. Twenty since yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. been pissing people. Economic, off. not not being cognizant of the, how difficult it is to transition in an economy created today. You know, you have a Harvard study that comes out that says the single largest contributor to income inequality is U.S. trade deals and the influx of illegal immigration. Yeah. Why do you think, you think he didn't know this research was going on a month, a year ago, and it, the results are released, and he seizes on it, and all of a sudden now this is his lead economic, going to be on his economic team? He's been playing this since 2011. <laughs> it's a mistake. Like, everyone has made the same mistake. Yeah. You know, the, it's like that meme that... Um, Oh, but he won't be the candidate come December. A man says nervously, and then yeah. picture Rachel Maddow. Yeah. <laughs> well, first they make fun of you, yeah, they do. then they attack you, Chicago. Mm -hmm. oh, then he's going to win. And he won Illinois. Yeah, well, I mean, he won the stronger state. at this point. Yeah. I know because he's emboldening the people that support him, and now they're exempt from reason. So reason and logic don't work now because well, they, they never had. Nobody's it's ever voted off of reason and logic. I, I, it's a party for reason and logic. Well, not in. Yeah, but you know, but I mean, like, you know, Republicans are the ones that, at least in their messaging, preach principle. Where Democrats are the ones that preach pragmatism. You can be pro-business and also, you know, give people a helping hand yeah. when they're in a struggle. You know, like they don't really have a governing philosophy, and except Bernie's the real game changer. And yeah, Bernie, Bernie, yeah, he's legit. He, I mean, he, he is. He's, he's every, a principled he's democratic legit. socialist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the whitest state in America with the highest income. That's why he's doing white <laughs> wealth. Yeah. He's Denmark of the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, democratic socialism usually sells well because yeah. they're older. You, people in New York use Vermont as a suburb, you know, to dodge the taxes of New York State. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but socialism, though. Pro socialism. Pro -socialism. Yeah, dodge taxes. I'm going to be over here to dodge taxes yeah. in New it's York. It's not State. a dirty word, it's 2016. Yeah. How, how do you guys, uh, because. I, I don't know. I mean, if it if it comes down to it, are you so you say you will not, Tyler, no, vote, I, vote for Trump? I, no, I no, I I don't think it. There's a reason to. I I think he's got it sewed up, honestly. So who will who are you planning on voting for? Gary Johnson, more than likely. Atta boy. Great. No, but I I don't think it matters honestly. What about you? I mean, you you've been. You, I don't know if you do it to rustle my jimmies. I don't. I, I literally look, like have written and written and written on this like to a lot of people because like no yeah. no one wants to hear it. Have you posted it on WeAreLibertarians.com yet? No, because who reads it? <laughs> honestly, like because I write I write long form. I write long essays more so than articles. But I try to be as thorough as possible. Document my all my opinions. You know, but they're long and they're yeah. tedious to get through. But you know, for me. That's but see that's the beauty of it. A you archive it. B you, it does get read, and then C you can just save yourself a ton of time not rewriting the same thing. You go here's the link, read it, and then we get clicks. True, yeah. and so I will. I'll put it out there because I have it all saved and was reading through it because I do struggle with it. Like ultimately, you believe in Gary Johnson because you trust him. Yes, you trust that everything Gary Johnson says he, he means. He's proven. I mean, in, in government, he is an individual. 
former CEO of the company, joined a political party that he wasn't a member of in order to run for governor and win the nomination, mm -hmm. outsider who said that he would struggle to govern in a bureaucracy because he beat the establishment attorney general pick in the New Mexico primary, ended up being hugely popular and bucked the establishment and beat the Democrats in a two to one Democrat state, then sought the Republican nomination and decided, well, I can't really do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch parties where I can find a platform. It sounds a lot like no, 2000 Donald Trump yeah. to today. Exactly. Now, Donald Trump is different in that Gary's message, his philosophical principles have never changed, yep. whether he's been libertarian or Republican. Donald is the ultimate Huey Long firebrand populist that I do actually think, if you've listened, his, his narrative never changed on getting a fair shake on trade, which is the fundamental core of his entire appeal, because he was never going to win Republicans. No. And he was a politician, so he's never going to win a regular race and put together a, a any kind of canvassing operation. He had two options, to make it schoolyard insults, say, but he had to be able to say what people were thinking. Quickly. Very mm -hmm. short. Mm -hmm. And he had to dominate the media and never let anyone else get air. Yeah. And he's done it. I know. And, you know, the other thing, too, is like, so if you look at it, most people didn't even, like the immigration thing, I get it, but then, you know, it's so hard to run against, like in Southern California last week, a member of a Mexican, or a, a illegal, <laughs> an illegal immigrant, yeah. arrested for a felony, but then released because of the prison situation and lack of funding in California, rapes and bashes in the head of a 65-year-old grandma. It was, what, like two weeks after? Yeah, yeah. and that's one person. Wow. Yeah. Now, it is only one person, but it's the same thing when, who, it was when George H.W. Bush ran against Dukakis, mm -hmm. there was a felon that was released early, and murdered someone or raped someone Willie Horton or yeah like Willie Horton I think was the name and that's what won H.W. Bush and you know on the verge of a recession because of the savings and loans crisis you know won him a presidential election is one villainization and now Trump will do that but the reality is the United States spends 11 billion dollars a year on free health care to individuals that we send back to Mexico that's 11 billion dollars a year that doesn't go to kids period Based on 2000, or so in two, or was it 2000? Yeah, 2000, Bill Clinton sells the US Congress and the world on admitting China into the World Trade Organization. I have not, I've yet to see an estimate that China's intellectual property yeah. um, and cyber espionage theft is $300 billion annually to the information economy of the United States. And that's one of Trump's main. Trade. <laughs> no one's really been pro-American worker because we all are idealists and we want to, free trade is what heals things. It exposes us to people, it enter, you enter new markets, it's what is going to save us and with Iran in the Middle East. It's what's going to, you know, one of the, uh, one of the uh, I think it was Chuck Todd on a, on a forum with Bernie Sanders said, being protectionist uh, is sort of antithetical to being... Um, against poverty in third world countries and wanting the United States to do something about that because NAFTA has helped raise a lot of people in Mexico out of poverty. How do you square that? And he's just like, not Americans. Right. And the, but, yeah, but he, right. He's not run for president in Mexico. Right. Yeah. And that's what that's what and that's yeah, kind that's of what, what he said. union workers right. say. Yeah. Well I mean they, they got hit that's the thing is that in a trade debt this is why economics is always important is like so if the United States was ran a even trade with China Protectionism hurts us, yeah. because immediately what happens is they stop buying our goods, we stop buying their goods, employment drops for both of us, demand drops, and that ripples to the entire economy until there's layoffs. When you're a deficit country, and we're over $350 billion annually, so over a billion dollars a day just to China, and they impose a 45% import tax on us, mm -hmm. and yet they rip off to the tune of $300 additional billion dollars a year for IP, movies, counterfeit goods, mm -hmm. Counterfeit golf equipment's the huge one, um, and no one. And then they subsidize steel. Hacking. So, like the United States steel industry got crushed because when they entered the World Trade Organization, the free market conservative George Bush didn't want to put steel tariffs on it, and so people started buying Chinese steel, which is what got Donald Trump in the race. But uh, yeah, but he says, well, you know, Apple will be making the iPhone in right. America. It's but like, they won't be. That's politics. But, yeah, he won't be. He's just saying things if that. You, but he's a politician. Though. Barack Obama was going to close Guantanamo. Right. Well, Donald he actually Trump tried microphones in front of him. He, that is his political ad. He's in his arena. 
That's his ads because he knows whatever he says is going to get aired. It's going to get more air time than he paid for a million dollar. They said so far ad. this year he spent the equivalent of air time he's gotten on the three CNN, MSNBC, and uh, ABC, CBS, and then Fox is the equivalent of four hundred and twenty-five million dollars oh, in yeah. free advertising. And he spent what? Three. Thirty. Three million. Three million of his spent. of his own money. Yeah. I think he's spent more than that, though. Yeah, Personally, I, his own. Not what he's fundraised and oh, okay. made from hats. I think it's like <laughs> close to 30. I think, yeah, I think it was around 30 mil, like 28. But yeah, like, so he's like he's actually, though, running now cash flow positive on his own investment. Oh, that's hilarious. He's a good businessman. <laughs> but I mean, that's... that's, that's he like, sold a lot of hats. Awesome that that deal. <laughs> That'd be awesome deal, if, man. like, you know... And then, like, for instance, we... When most campaigns end with a lot of debt, like, Scott Walker still has so much campaign debt. Right. And then then you look at, like, so when we uh, deport somebody, and President Obama, like, that's the other thing. President Obama's deported more yeah. the aliens than any other president in U.S. history. Yeah. And he's the, the good feels. Right. You know, but, he, you know, I really, I, and I believe this, and this is where it all comes down to for everyone, no matter who you support for politics. Gary Johnson switched parties. You yeah. could sp spin that as a flip flopper if his philosophical principles have never changed. Donald Trump has one philosophical principle. He's well, he, self interested and pro American worker. Yeah, I, and he's bringing in Democrats to the Republican Party because the Democrats aren't pro American yeah. worker. So I, yeah. I, I, I don't. I feel like Donald Trump turns off. I, I listened to an interview that it's a, the David Axelrod podcast, and he had Mark Leibovich on, and that's good. Mark Leibovich is a great writer. Uh, what is it? Residents of the Green Room, or uh, it's uh, and then also this town. Oh, you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a New York Times writer who's yep. basically spent all these years uh, backdoor access bashing. Right? Yeah, it's on the bottom shelf there. If you look, you can. Uh, oh, the anarchist it. cookbook. That one. Yeah, yeah that mm -hmm. one. Next to um, it. And he <laughs> just, got to me. He just <laughs> basically said that Donald Trump is completely intellectually uninterested in anything other than Donald Trump. You know, he spent all this time on the plane and around him, and, you know, he was very charmed by the kids, you know, and, but he he would turn off, he basically just watches Donald Trump on the TV. He reads Donald Trump in the newspapers. He doesn't read anything else. He doesn't have other advisors. You heard him this week on, on uh, it was maybe Fox and Friends or whatever it was. I tweeted the link out. Um, and basically, He consults himself. He consults himself. He goes, He's got uh, a big brain. He's, he's got a big brain. Smart. Who wants an expert? No, like, if Here, I'll play that, the audio. Is that bad, though, if someone who's all they're interested in is their legacy? Do you think he really, he's not going to try to be the best the person most, he can? The most predictable kind of candidate you can ever have is one who isn't beholden to party. Oh, no. Only self-interest. Because everything he does, he's everything he undertakes, will he's be self that on the record. He's like, you think I'm really going to tell you what, I'm gonna, what my policies are going to be? Especially when it comes to <laughs> Which is something I've advocated for forever with Richard Nixon. He goes, Nixon. you, you think I'm going to sit here and tell China and Russia what I'm actually going to do? You threaten everything. But that's not how we work as a country. Right. It's never been done. No. I know, and that's the that's a problem. And that's what scares people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because but, he, he has emperor-like qualities. What's great, though, about this country is that you've got Congress to shut him down. If And both major parties against him in every other country yes. in the world. I mean, if you think he's that he's going to get this shit across... With the U.S. Of military is talking about outright rejection of what he orders. Yeah, so no, like, I don't they think literally didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lindsey Graham, a, did you hear that? Yeah, the emperorship <laughs> isn't possible because the military doesn't even want to do right now take orders from the. They're pissed. They literally, what? Lindsey Graham literally read off Donald Trump's. Uh, I believe it was a quote about him. Uh, we need to kill terrorist families and Go their after kids, him. or whatever he said. Yeah, the thing that, that violates, he, it's a war yeah, crime. Yeah. No, he, 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 read, he read it to a general, and the general said, uh, no, we'll never do that, and it's illegal. Well, well hold on, hold on. No, so, they've done it, though. And yep, so you all really have. Anwar al is an American citizen, right. no trial, mm -hmm. droned his son two weeks later in Samir right. Khan, both American citizens who went to go see if their if his dad was alive in yeah. Yemen, yep. they ordered a signature yeah. strike on him with no trial, and no crime. But that's no not an argument terrorism. for Trump because we were on this program arguing it against that. It isn't. No, but it's yeah. a political message. It's politics, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and, and politics is manipulation. And if you think like the reason Barack Obama struggled is he went to Cairo. If you would just unclench your fist, we wanted to establish a dialogue at Cairo University in Egypt. You, in this world, unfortunately, we've create, created so many crimes, uh, screwed up virtually everywhere we've ever intervened. Yes. Really. Yeah, we're yeah. just trying to put we, in who we want. Yeah, we haven't had a positive outcome anywhere work. we've intervened, really. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, so here, here's the, the clip from Trump that I want to play that, that just made me laugh out loud when I heard it. It's so silly. He's on Morning Joe, and this is Mika. Oh, Mika wants to be a oh, she, man. She's, yeah. yeah. He goes, I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have a very good brain, and I, I have a lot of good ideas. I, I have a lot of, it's, it's, just, it's so silly. Uh, yeah, but he's got you replaying it. That's a free ad right there. I know, but is it really an ad when I go, what an idiot. Yeah, because if you, know you are, it, there is no like group of people that's undecided about Donald Trump. That's absolutely, absolutely true. Yeah. There isn't. Yeah. You know why? And people decided. love him because he, he will literally say whatever the hell he thinks. And the Bernie coalition was going to go to Donald Trump because Hillary supports the TPP. And, and that's why the advertising really didn't work. That's why the w women's ad didn't work. At this point, he's a known commodity. He's reached saturation. Yeah, and so he pretty much has the nomination sewn up. I, if he can get it, because I mean, there are rule. Roger Stone wrote an article today. Oh yeah, I don't know that Trump can, and the amount of, I don't know if he comes in with fifty delegates short, I think he'll get it. If it's over a hundred, he won't. I, it'll, yeah. it'll be John Kasich or it'll be Paul Ryan. What happens then if he doesn't? What do you think happens? We'll, we'll talk about that, that on a future episode. Let's not jump a horse, but no, there's just, a. That's a dun, 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 dun. But like, for part, part, part of it is how, people want to take down Trump. Yeah, people want to take him down, right? Because people hate winners. Because no. Because here's my thing. I'm on the fence on whether or not this is all an act, or if he's really just crazy, and I don't want to take the chance that he's a crazy emperor, and I will cause but the, but will cause a constitutional crisis where he orders the military to do something and they say no. Well, that would be the opposite of an emperor. Yeah. Though, wouldn't it? <laughs> How would any of the other people besides? You know, Gary Johnson running aren't going to be a, could be an emperor. What the oligarchy of Hillary Clinton, Ooh, Dick or, Cheney, yeah, Cheney, or uh, running the first term of Bush, yeah, or I don't the Eleanor you know, or the Messiah um, Obama. You know, which one of those aren't emperor like? I mean, he pretty much about faced on all of his liberal ideals. I know, but you guys are you, you like, Harry. You're using the arguments that were used against Obama. Oh no, ever. I'm not supporting Trump. I don't all right, no, no, okay. Okay. Harry does not want a great yeah. America. I'm clear. clear for John Madden. First off, okay. <laughs> I think if you look at everyone who doesn't want him, it, can the guy? Is it really that he's that bad? And he's winning. Yes. If everyone, but hold on, hold on, everyone's on. against you and you're winning. That even if he is that bad. And he's still getting all these votes. Are you? We're really gonna say no? You, you people are. You don't know what you want. You can't. You, I mean, you, I mean, is this not? You can't. Your vote doesn't matter. Anymore? I understand it's the Republican primary right now. Right, and he's not been a long-term party member, and they're yeah. gonna protect their brand and their. But what has status quo? That's what they do. Right. For having such an open primary, they brought it upon themselves too. Uh, if you want to know the whole convention chaos thing, there's a, a Politico, like, Politico mm -hmm. article, "The Path to Convention Chaos." Ways or something. The Path to Convention Chaos by Benjamin Ginsburg, written on March 12, 2016. Who was the attorney in Gore versus Bush? Yeah, so he he, he wrote the, all uh, that out. The West Palm Beach delegates. I want to uh, I want to read a few things uh, because I read a few things that I thought were interesting that I want the audience to hear. Uh, the first is from Michael D. Tanner. He's a Cato uh, scholar. He also writes for National Review. Uh, this is titled, this article's Trump, the Candidate of Raw Emotion. And it was posted, I don't know what day this was posted. Um, they're not, for some weird reason, they don't have the date on there. But uh, yeah, we, we tweeted it out. Um, uh, so, a Trump presidency would offer little good news for those seeking to reduce government spending and restrain the national debt. True. Trump has effectively put more than half of the budget off limits since he has ruled out substantive reforms of entitlement. Social Security accounts for 23% of federal spending, Medicare 15%, and Medicaid 10%. Interest on the debt, 6.5%, is also untouchable. And Trump wants to increase the defense budget, currently 15% of federal spending. That leaves just over 30% of federal spending available to trend. And Trump has identified few cuts even in these programs. For example, he supports farm subsidies and increased spending at the VA. Essentially, Trump promises to make government more efficient and cut waste, fraud, and abuse. That's not going to get the job done. On the other hand, Trump has called for trillions in tax cuts over the next 10 years. His tax cuts are generally pro-growth and would likely boost American competitiveness and job creation, 
which are good things, but in the absence of serious spending restraint, tax cuts of this size could well lead to more debt. The Tax Foundation estimates that with, even without increased, even with increased economic growth, Trump's plan would add more than $10 trillion to the debt by 2024. They go on to talk about health care, where he's been all over the place. For no, he's adamant. He's, he is a, I mean, he used to be single, single payer, but even yeah. Democrats now admit single payer is not possible here. Right. He, and so, I mean, he is, but he's always been populist. He has said yeah. verbatim, listen, I'm, this is going to cost me support with Republicans, but I'm going to make sure everyone's protected. And somehow, like, he said we that's, can't that's have people horror, dying in the streets. Like, like, <laughs> Chris Matthews and Joe Scarborough have turned that into a negative. And yeah. it's like, like, what the what? hell are you? He just sounded like Barack Obama who yeah. gave you a shiver up your leg. And you're uh, like, now so, it's because yeah. it's the white guy but on who, Park Avenue. Who's <laughs> policy... Does he review anyone else's policies? Who are just just, gonna... just Trump because Trump's the front front runner. Right? No, no, but I, but, yeah. but who cares about Marco Rubio's policies? Yeah. Marco Rubio he's got probably small... doesn't he? He's got L <laughs> L I D D L E policies. <laughs> so if you want to get a Cato Scholar uh, review of Trump's health care, foreign policy, trade, and social issues, uh, you can you can get a uh, you can take a look at that. Uh, Trump the candidate of raw motion by Michael Tanner, Danny's brother. Danny Tanner. Uh, there, there's another article that I found that I thought was really interesting in terms of who Donald Trump is and what he believes, and maybe a little bit of what he's up to. And I don't know if you guys read this. I posted it in chat and in the We Are Libertarians Facebook group, which you can access at wearelibertarians.com. Join us. We post a bunch of links in there in between shows. Uh, Trump Building the Generals in His Own Style, January 1, 1984, by Ira Burkow. And this is basically when he bought the USFL team, and he's taking on uh, NFL. the NFL. And there's a lot of, I think, instructive things in here about Donald Trump's personality when he was younger, and a little more clear than the old crazy man. Oh, yeah, you know. read his book. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you don't get to just see Donald Trump. You have to see an eight-minute slideshow about Trump Tower and Donald Trump, which I thought that was hilarious. But he's written about that. That is to keep... It's his, like... Um, it's his vetting process. Yeah, so, like, if you're willing to sit through it, he'll sit through you. Like, he did, that's his te litmus test to get access. So he was building some condos, uh, and he says, Creating illusions to an extent is what has to be done, said Donald, Donald John Trump, sitting behind a white desk, in front of a large window on the 26th floor. These are the Southside Riverfront, riverfront condos yeah. that he had to sell off because of the yeah, real uh, savings and loans crisis. Wow. Now that was after that. That was Grand Central Station. Oh. On the 26th floor that looked out on the panorama of Central Park. But you have to give quality. And I've always gone first class. Uh, this is when he was t 37. Two of the people I admired most and who I kind of studied for the way that they did things were the great Flo Zigfield, the Broadway producer of Zigfield Follies, and Bill Zeckendorf, the builder. They created glamour and pageantry. The elegance, the joy they brought to what they did was magnificent. Others tried to copy them and generally failed. Uh, I, so I thought that was really interesting. One of his main influences was, in life, is a Broadway producer. You know why? Why? Like, or, like did anyone here, though, read The Art of the Dealer or anything like that? Like, no, yeah. Anyone... yeah, I just read it just, recently. Again. Not since I was yeah. a little kid. <laughs> so, like, his, experts. like, Trump can be explained by his context. So, like, his dad was a slumlord, Fred. Yeah, and yet he was perpetually courted. Among, like he he had looking glass syndrome among the elite yeah. in New York City, and they treated him like dirt. But then they wanted donations, and he was always uh, his dad. Like so, he was never part of the establishment rich Manhattan. Like because Manhattan at the time, the Grand Condor Hotel yeah. had a porn shop. So where Trump Tower is now, across the street, was a porn shop. Mm -hmm. Manhattan was decimated. Uh, Wall Street, if you've seen The Wolf of Wall Street, the day Jordan Belfort starts is Black Monday. Mm -hmm. Utter collapse. Before that, the 80s were a terrible time. Shit for me. Trump got his million dollar inheritance, mm -hmm. leveraged that to buy the option on Grand Central Station and the Commodore Hotel, but he didn't have any more money. And his dad, dad was like a minority investor and wouldn't back him. So he had to get the unions. He had to get banks that were all hurting because they had just lost their ass in the savings and loan crisis mm -hmm. and he had to get um, public officials to give him access to do a restoration and then these condos as well with the tax breaks as well yeah he had to get tax breaks he had to get subsidies he did but er, if you read there's New York Times articles on it and this is back before he was a political figure and they are there no one thought it could be done and he um, but because he did it 
he was able to pull off the woman skating rink. Mm-hmm. Um, he was able to pull off Trump International Towers. He, he rebuilt Manhattan from like where people would go and watch porn films in the middle of the day. And now it's not kidding. Like now yeah. it's where Home Alone Two was filmed, Mm-mm. and this was the ostentatious the and the, the vision. Left. And like why you walk in there is because it was completely gold, and the strategy was we have to create a public spectacle to get people to come back to Manhattan. Yeah. And now today, because he first got the option in '84, outside of Hong Kong per square foot, it's over three thousand dollars per square foot to rent in his building and the buildings adjacent to it. So it's a, the second most expensive place to rent in the world and it used to be a porn where a guy would go watch snuff films in the middle of that <laughs> from all yeah, but what you read is that not politics though just yeah and, and he goes on you know he talks about well, what i like is for people to tell me something can't be done when i think it can in real estate you deal with some very smart very devious people they're the sharpest wolves in the world i've competed against them and i've come out fine uh, sports is really small potatoes to that uh, goes on to brag about his record, talk about hiring Herschel Walker. Yep. Um, From the NFL. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Brian, yeah. Uh, uh, what's and they had real momentum. The USFL, I mean, compared to anything like the XFL. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the well, they won wrestling. the lawsuit. But. Yeah. <laughs> but then <laughs> Reggie White from Tennessee, the Minister of Defense, defensive end, went. he got drafted in the USFL and decided to do that over the NFL. First pick in both. Yeah. Uh, so then he goes on to talk about people are hungry for a winning football team in New York. Uh, and I'm sure they'll support it. There's a void today in New York, and the NFL, with all its parody, is equal and boring. I remember when I used to love to watch the Green Bay Packers in their great years. You like to watch excellence, not everyone being equal. And if you rooted for an underdog team to beat them, it was inspiring. It gave you hope. It's like people going to watch Mar- Martina Navratilova play tennis. You know she's going to win, but go and you watch her for her excellence, and if someone beats her, it's a great upset. And that's wonderful, too. So I think that crafting of the narrative of the underdog, I think, is now playing out here as well. No, for sure. I mean, he's a showman, and he, he's a promoter that, if it were entirely up to him, he'd never be able to pull this off. He can only have people around him that are actually experts at what they do. And then, you know, he, if you've seen that Jobs movie, strength. he plays the orchestra, and everybody is sitting in a chair, and he plays them. That's his instrument. I, I, I think that's one, of his, that's one of the reasons that he's doing so well is, or that I wouldn't mind him getting in is that I think he realizes his shortcomings, I believe, and that he can pick, obviously look at The Apprentice, he can pick, he can delegate, out, he can, he can delegate yeah. out the cabinet members and sit back and... He oh, should, because if, if he did it himself, he would be worse. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I think he would. Now, I know you have very, I mean, you don't like him. Not under I, at all. And I get it. Why he, he's don't. not a libertarian candidate at all. Uh, he's he, not, he, uh, he I and I, that. yeah, we talked about why, um, you know, I, I just don't, I don't feel he has the temperament. I don't feel that he is thoughtful. I don't feel that he is uh, libertarian in the slightest. No. I think there, there are certainly things about him that, Policy wise, that I think would be good, but, but that's it's, with every candidate. It's certainly, yeah, there's things that I agree with him on, but it's not enough to get me to switch. And I just don't like his approach. I don't feel that his approach is healthy for the country. I think that it's divisive. I think the violence is really, uh, I, I think he missed a real opportunity to show political leadership this past couple weeks uh, and, and just say, you know, I disavow violence. I'm not a violent person. People are doing this. People are doing that. Blah blah blah. And you know, call call the guy that got cold cocked in the face, the young black guy, and say, "Hey, are you okay? Pay for his medical bills." And you know, like instead oh, yeah, of just yeah. doubling down and paying for the the pro, I mean, it's just the guy that cold cocked him. He's going to pay his legal bills. I just think that that's. You know what he's doing is not very well thought out. I think that's you it's just very hit short-sighted. the most single most important element in this entire election. Right. On all sides. Is he presidential? And the people that want a pre- like a diplomatic statesman leader who is hu- is humble, mm-hmm. who will let people say face, who is strong enough to take criticism and not let it bug him. That is, he's the little literally polar opposite. He's the opposite of Martin Sheen in The West Wing. Yep, it, which is the perfect. idealized the idealized president. 
and I mean, I would give it. I look for that president every day. Yes. I look for that candidate every day. I think I, this this may be out there, but I think he is still just going along with the negativity because he knows it sells. And then once you see, once he gets that lock, I think you'll see. You've already seen it a little bit. In oh yeah, his, in, in his speech, I couldn't believe he's coming he, back around. His acceptance speech, I couldn't believe. Yeah. It. Oh yeah, it was well, incredible. Like who that was. Yeah, I, I I just don't find him to be authentic. If you're looking Jesus, for someone who's going to be yeah. consistent the entire way, you're not going to. He's no, the worst but, candidate you can. Oh imagine. yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, he's not presidential, yeah. but he'll say in his speeches. Uh, Ivanka, she's telling me that ain't presidential, but you know what I'm gonna do? I don't care. I'll call him up. I can't stop right. myself. I'm not president yet, so I this is what I would do. I can't help it. There, Maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll change. There is definitely an element of politics turning into entertainment totally, and uh, we are guilty of this sometimes. And it, I, it's I'm always guilty been, of it. Yeah. and it always has Except been. Except for when Washington tried to be the you know everyone's president. After that, parties happened. It, it's now it gone was, mainstream though. Yeah. Yeah, nerd sports is is what it's always kind of been called, but now it's not nerd sports. Now everybody's got an opinion on Trump, and he gave him a reason to watch. Before yeah. that, if this were Jeb and Hillary, it'd be hard to get a like you know people would do the whole He's like bringing... oh I've been watching it closely, and this is you know these are what this is what's going on in the race with Trump. Everyone's watching every minute, Absolutely. and there's no Everything. faking it. And he's bringing what he built to be the largest last name. Quite possibly in America, in luxury branding. Yeah, I mean he's a brand literally in. That's out there every day, and people, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, but he's, I don't know, he's so just, he stays in the media. From this article, uh, at the news conference for Brian Seip, for example, Seip was telling, um, uh, well, let me start here. Meanwhile, Trump, the newest uh, franchise owner, goes about becoming one of the most visible and, in a way, candid. At the news conference for Brian Seip, for example, Seip was telling about having been benched for a game. He was a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Trump stood up and, and said it came after Seip on an off day was in New York talking with Trump, and the Browns knew it and reacted angrily to it. Brian is too much of a gentleman to say it, said Trump, but I guess I'm not. Trump re was reminded of that recently. That's the way I saw it. Perhaps honesty and overrides gentlemanliness, he said. But in the end, we got him. We got results. I like results. And I think that is a lot of what people like about Trump, is that he is results-oriented, and Republicans especially don't feel that they have gotten results. They feel that they have been, um, they haven't been listened to, and they've been ignored. And, and it's not just Republicans. It's white, middle-class, non-college degree laborers. Yeah, absolutely. In their trades. It's a working right. class. They were told, trust, just trust us. Mm -hmm. This deal is going to expand our, us into new markets. Your job right now, labor isn't cheap in the United States. We're the world's reserve currency. Regard, I mean, it's just the fact of the matter is we are the global standard. We don't get the luxury of manipulating our currency to boost exports. Right. So that being the case, labor is never going to be cheap. So the, Bill Clinton, I mean, he ushered it in and he meant it with the best of intentions. Here's what we can get in this NAFTA deal. And here's what we can get by admitting China to the WTO. I feel your pain. Here are subsidies and credits to go back to community college and support your family and learn a new skill. The problem was, it was the information age, which was on the precipice. Mm -hmm. Those jobs left faster than trade jobs. Oh, yeah, because you don't have India to build a factory. came out of nowhere. <laughs> you right got to open up a laptop. You information <laughs> doesn't have unions. It can't. Yeah. yeah. So then they got hit twice. Now, not only did the guy that might have been a union rep or might have been, you know, a lead assembler on a product line or assembly line, then went and, you know, maybe he was the okay. ideal. He went and got an IT contracting degree, you know, information technology consultant mm -hmm. backing. And all of a sudden, he could only demand $12 an hour to support a family of four where before he'd been making 33 and they shut down the GE stamping plant here sure. in Indianapolis. And no one was there to say, here's your next step. Because now he's 50. Right. Then, no he, going then he went to go get his real estate license. And right. <laughs> and then you're back for a little while. You forgot about that. But you know what? Playing victim doesn't do anybody any good. No, it doesn't serve all. those people well. It doesn't, but when it's a mob it doesn't and a help. reason and logic don't work, and it creates worse when you're When your government's also making policies at the same time, sure. that is and it's directly, Democrats telling you that is for directly you. negating right. any benefit. It's a, Complete opposite policy of what should have been enacted, and th and that's the funny dichotomy because it's Bernie appeals to the same crowd it's as the Donald same Trump, coalition. 
and Bernie Bernie points the gun at Wall Street and the decision makers the and the politicians, the people who actually are responsible. The person he's running against. Well, he wants more government. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Donald Trump is one of those people that Bernie would be mad at. And but and that's the hilarious thing about Donald Trump is that Donald Trump is establishment. He is an insider. He is a billionaire. But they see in, him in as an York. outsider who who they see themselves. If I only had. A million dollars, I could become a billionaire. Trump doesn't right. get invited to Wall Street events. No. They see him as brash and the ugly. They hate him in New York. He, right. He is. He's a joke. Right. Right. And they hate that because right. this is about right. pedigree, connections, mm -hmm. American mm -hmm. bloodlines, Gosh, and right. so putting Trump. Trump built the playground they all live in in Manhattan mm -hmm. and rebuilt it and restored it, and yet he doesn't get invited to the cocktail party. Right. It's a say he he is the result of what he's become like he thought he'd Mittens. build it and be part of the establishment. Leave her alone. But he became learning how to manipulate the press, he became unpalatable to every power broker in the world. Well, he's just not someone we can trust. Well he's not one of us. Right. You know, even and, though he's valedictorian of his class at Wharton in real estate finance, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Even I, though he's from New York, it doesn't matter because of how he's the ugly American. He doesn't like Europe. I can tell you that I have felt this because of this. When you are outspoken and you are a public figure, I mean, I'm not Donald Trump and I'm not famous. And I'm not, way more famous. But, way more. but I have a public voice in the Libertarian Party of Indiana and my recent criticisms of one of their candidates and the quote-unquote causing infighting you start to get alienated a little bit because, man, we just can't trust you at the inner circle. You're not part of the team anymore, huh? All right. You know. I guess we, uh, you know, maybe we should uh, back off including him in this discussion. Yeah. And, 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 and then it's all because you're, you mean well and you mean to expose light on manipulation and, mm -hmm. um, you know, co like secret coalitions forming to prevent the democratic process from working and electing political candidates in both yeah. parties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like Stephen Colbert, who w hates Trump, at the end of the day, in an interview, he says, oh, "God, I find it so refreshing, though, that what people want actually does matter in the United States." Yeah, yeah. that is a good point, point. and that's so refreshing. And but Trump is the most divisive, the most. I don't think I could draw up a better ugly American picture than him. Absolutely not. He's garish. He's loud. Like he's brash. He's, he's rushed, been a joke his entire life. Right. Right. In the media. And he accepted it. And like one thing that I, no one The biggest gets, media hub of the worst. Yeah. And he wanted to do it. And he, he wanted his failures shit. to be public. Yeah. So he'd get press coverage. Yeah. yeah. And like to me, one thing that's happening in America that's a, a terrible trend is the millennial generation, like we were raised that we were a nation of test takers. So like we had to meet these you know, do this. Here's a gold star. Mm -hmm. You're perfect. Uh, yeah, and it was you know. And but that gold. that creates people are afraid to take a risk, because now oh my God, failures embar that's embarrassing. Yes, yeah. And it's like that with all the millennials that I have like, working for me. They, they don't want to take a risk. That's why like it was like, well, why is Harry in charge? Because I'll take a risk. I don't care if I fail. It's I don't even think I can. I'm wrong all the time. As yes. long as I fix it, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Right. I won. I got the W. And so like people hammer them on the bankruptcy, and I kind of like. You know what? Everyone went bankrupt in the savings and loan crisis. Oh, yeah, four out of they all how many they companies? leveraged one fifty eight. Yeah, they leveraged so like for every million dollars they borrowed, you know they had only had to put up like one hundred and fifty thousand, and the rest was leverage. Mm -hmm. And so when interest rates rise, you're screwed. Right. Loans get called, and it spirals out of control, and everyone goes bankrupt. He, in his book, he writes about he's walking down the street on Black Monday, sees a bum, and goes, "Oh my God, that guy's nine hundred million dollars richer than I am." Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> And to come right. back from that publicly after you've lived, mm -hmm. uh, I'm the god, mm -hmm. I'm the playboy, I'm living Hugh Hefner's dream, he, yeah. and then you have to eat crow like that, and you stay in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and then decide, I'm not going to build a company built on debt, I'm going to build it licensing a luxury brand, so there isn't any debt. It's, le it's a lesson learned. He's yeah. a master in hedging his bet. And he can admit he's wrong, he changes his position. He does, he's he, a does. Flip -flopper. he does. He doesn't. Uh, if you want to call that flip flopping, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you Both gain knowledge position. on a subject and you're you turn out to be right, I don't consider that flip flopping. Yeah. So yeah. now we look ahead, and it is Cruz, who in my mind will be a diminishing candidate because he's he, regional. Because the media, the, the unfortunately for Kasich, Kasich, the best earned media day that he would have had the last two days has been dominated by the SCOTUS pick, and so he basically he's 
pretty much DOA now after winning uh, that. And he has to win 112% of the remaining delegates to Which win. Which is impossible. It, it's not. It, well, it, it, it can is. happen at it's a brokered convention. Totally impossible. But once you go to the convention and people like Rubio, Jeb Bush, and all these. See, the thing with Kasich is that Kasich is everyone's second choice. <laughs> And so when you're everyone's second choice in a brokered convention where you're voting on rounds of ballots, that's a really powerful place to be. And I've, I've said it from the beginning. You all looked at me shocked months ago when I said Kasich is the guy to watch. I love I, Kasich. Yeah, um, I, I think we all were on that episode. Kasich. Yeah, because yeah. the thing was, he's no Republicans ever won without winning Ohio. Ohio, yeah. yeah. Well, that, so that's that a non-starter was... if he's not your VP or endorses you. And, and I had a Democratic coworker come to me the other day and say, "Listen, I don't. I'm a Democrat. I don't like Bernie. I don't like Hillary. But this case guy kind of scratched me where I itch, you know. And so I think that there is a possibility that case. I think Cruz is just done. <laughs> I don't think he's he's going anywhere. He's a regional candidate. Kasich has more of a broad appeal. The media is going to paint it as, you know, the outsider versus the insider, which is funny because a governor can't really be. And he's the ultimate Republican insider. Yeah. There K isn't oh, yeah. a bigger one. Kasich, Kasich is a, a former House Budget Committee guy. He was a congressman, part of the 94 class. Fox News show. Fox yeah. News show. Managing director at Lehman Brothers that went failed. Right. He, I mean, he is Mr. Establishment. Right. And so I, I think that they will try to paint it be, you know, between these two. But when, when it really comes down to it, Trump's going to be the nominee. Hillary Clinton's going to be the nominee at this point. I really do think that, and I think it's going to be one of the nastiest campaigns we've seen in recent history. Who wins? Who's your pick? Oh, I think Trump will absolutely destroy Hillary. David, David you want to Pope was on one... Kelly File, who yeah. was the President Obama's. Yeah. Did you watch that? No, I didn't see And he goes, I wouldn't want to run against Donald Trump. Ever. I wouldn't either. You want to know why? You can't predict it. Mm -hmm. 2011, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Remember, yep, I, I that article about was that. epic. That is the article. That is the night that he decided to run for president. It because is. He realized that he had no pull in politics, and he wanted himself, for whatever reason, personal reasons, he wanted to be respected in the political ring. He's wanted that his whole life. He rebuilt Manhattan he so did. he could be among the rich. And everyone elite. shit on him. He don't. I I have a theory that he donated to Hillary mm -hmm. in 2012. For this. For this. So he could, if he got the main stage, he can literally look at her in the eyes and say, listen, I own you. Remember when I paid for you to yeah. come to my wedding? Yeah, and you couldn't even, you couldn't even beat Obama. Yeah. I think that is, a, that is literally a Trump card. And. <laughs> no, it, no it, it literally is. I, I literally and figuratively like, yeah. the ultimate Trump card. Do you yeah. really think that she can say anything against me when I gave her X amount of dollars? Hillary, I would never be here if you had just been effective because I donated to you and believed in you. Exactly. And now look. And Mitt, he's got the same thing with Mitt. Owned him. Yeah. Made got him. down on his knees. Right, yeah. He would have <laughs> got down on his knees. In that article that I read from 1984, he talks about buying into the USFL because it was a way to promote his other businesses. Yeah. He oh, says for sure. people real estate isn't sexy, people don't care about that, but people care about sports. New, New York's the largest market. And in so the world it was time. a way for him to promote his brand and his other businesses. And I think we're in a moment where politics is sports. I, I don't culture. care. I could care less about you know, I work on a national radio show that does comedy. And so in comedy what you do is you take the thing that everybody knows about yeah. the common theme, and then you make novel observations about it, and that is humor. So we don't talk about politics, but and so we do ourselves. We kind of hurt ourselves in terms of we limit what we can talk, not hurt. Um, and so you, with politics, it is. It's one of the last broad issues that we as a society can talk about. And then there's sports, and there's sex, and the human condition, and you, know, you build characters around that. But you... you you see that same sort of mindset in Trump in this run, and uh, what was the uh, the the guy that I was talking about earlier in the Axelrod interview? Uh, um, the, the New York Times writer. Oh, uh, Citizen, I, uh, I'm not, uh, Citizens of the Green Room, yeah, this Citizen, town, Mark Leibovich. Leibovich. And, and I almost said a really <laughs> uh, non-kosher term. And he said uh, he interviewed him in October and spent some time with him in October. And he he just had the impression that like Trump was doing this as a lark. It was not ever intended to be serious. And there was a certain point I remember watching TV. 
hell's the cat doing? Your cat is beating on the window like a freaking bongo she... drum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wish we, I had the camera on that. Yeah, she's like scratching at the glass hey, door. Stays... Is Mittens asking? Uh, no, <laughs> that's Cornelius, and uh, yes, she uh, is. He is now. And uh, he basically yeah. talked about how this was a lark. Like, he didn't expect this no. to happen. And I think... It's like when Trump, you want to... When Trump you doesn't need any more branding. I, right. I think he's done everything for it. I literally think Trump is in this for Trump's... He, he's, what, 73? No, he's 69. Are you sure he's not... S Bernie's 74. Is he the old... I, yeah. I thought Trump was in his 70s. He's 69. Is yeah. he 69? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I believe that Trump is doing this as a legacy because he's made he made Manhattan great. Everything he's done, he sees in his eyes that he's touched it and somehow took something out of the gutter and made it better. A lot of his themes would have been fake, like so country first or something about, you know, direct yeah. healing or forward. Mm -hmm. Restoration's what he does. It is. I mean, it That's is. That's his, his business. business. Yeah. And I think he's a restorer. That, right. With a big vision that everyone else thinks is retarded. And if he could do, if he and could I'm literally gonna, get to be not president, then. not even accomplish anything, but just having president next to his name, that would be the ultimate. I mean, that's the ultimate accomplishment. Right. He's always wanted to be a part of the class that he isn't. Yeah. And when you're a presidential family, you are the, you know, I was talking I was talking to my dad about this because he loves Kasich and he likes to watch the Trump rallies, but he, to, it's, he's the same way as Chris. He can't get over the demeanor. And his antics and how he devalues what the office would be like. Or that's what he assumes. Because none of us know. It's impossible to tell. Well, well, you look at it, Just look at history and you had Obama, hope and change. Well, Nothing happened. Well, no, it's, not, no, <laughs> well, no, it's how you behave. Oh, it, behave? It is, it is just he's either lying and taking advantage of good people or he says what he believes and he's batshit crazy. And either way, I'm just, it's like the Rand Paul You think he won't pursue trade? Like, so he won't fight for American workers that he's courting? I... I I think he has to. It doesn't matter whether or not he believes that. He I do has think, to. I mean, I, so. that's the one thing I think, without a doubt, like the connection and the amount of time he spends, 10,000 people I, I talking treat, for two hours, day after day, I get the political benefit. He flies into airport hangars and then flies off. He it, does three rallies and a day. What, three rallies what, are hilarious. There, and and what people think instances? of him that's so important to him. I can't, yeah. like, abandoning all these time you put in to get a positive group for once in your life behind you. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine going in and saying, well, we're going to sign the T TPP. Um, no no subsidies that. for job retraining. Good mm -hmm. luck. I believe at one point it was just the brand. Like, he thought of it, well, it's not going to hurt my brain if I get my name out. I'm still a, a kingmaker. I think yeah. he has, there's a lot of people in the shadows who are working for him. Trump's, I feel he's a pretty calculated person and he knows what's going on. He comes off as pretty stupid and like when he's talking. but Because stupid plays. It does. Smart it sells. loses every every election, and he's highly. George W. Bush with Al Gore. Yeah. Bill Clinton was the country boy versus H. W. Bush. Yeah. But, but Bush wasn't. Bush isn't an idiot though. No, but he comes off that way, and that's yeah. what plays because it's related. Look at his sound bites; they're just yeah. as bad as George George W. Bush got the bubbas that Bill Clinton was able to get. His dad wasn't. Otherwise, he'd never been president. True. And yeah. that was still let's vote against the Democrats. I mean, it's. It's all politics, but I think, like honestly, I know, and I've explained it because I actually think, uh oh, he's laughing. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're Greg Lenz. Uh -huh. Gregory Gregory Lenz sits before us right now. Uh -oh. uh, Greg Lenz I'm unfortunately trying. passed away. R.I.P. Hashtag. And oh, this is one year. Should we be putting almost? On the and the side? last thing <laughs> that you texted to Aaron Ewert in chat before Greg Lenz died, was, I'm a dick and crossed the line, sincerely sorry. And, and he yeah. posted it to your timeline. <laughs> and I remember why. <laughs> yeah, I remember He watching. came after me, and then I was like, I was like, I was annoyed, and I was like, well, I'm just going to end it. I, 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 my foreign policy is the same as my <laughs> chat policy. I wage war one time because I never want it to happen again. Turns out You're his, wa lives in yeah, that his wife was watching, and she doesn't uh, respect such an absolute approach. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so I did have to apologize that, about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's, it's, this is the greatest troll ever. Uh, Greg got reported for something by somebody. He had a 30-day ban. I couldn't. I, 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 Seven. There was a uh, Brian Kill. It was a media yeah. thing in Plainfield. I kept going after him until I annoyed him to the point. 
he reported me. And during my report, <laughs> someone reported me dead. Yeah, so he couldn't he couldn't access Messenger for seven days or Facebook for seven days. Somebody, uh, unbeknownst to the whole situation, Harry knew and didn't tell. Uh, That's what did. I know now. What? Uh huh. You've known the whole time, and I've been whoa, waiting for this. Whoa. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse uh -oh. Riddle, uh -huh. you were informed, and you thought I didn't know, didn't you? Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. yeah. Is he uh, blood? Break off, break off. <laughs> You're turning red. You just turned yeah. pink. Oh, uh -huh. shit. Break off, break off. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good friend. Good and, friend, Harry. And so, unbeknownst to Greg, what he got reported as dead, and he had 48 hours or 72 hours to send a report that he was alive, but he couldn't use Messenger, and so his Facebook account memorialized. Got memorialized, and he can't ever get it unfrozen. Greatest prank ever. I'm dead. All right, <laughs> Uh, all right, so we've talked a lot about Trump. And, um, and I don't want this to be an endorsement, because, like, I I trust one element of because of, like, I've watched him for a long time and read mm -hmm. his books. And I'm not necessarily a fanboy, but, like, the big thing to me is the Electoral College is now at 242 for the Democrats to, like, 125 starting out every single election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for me as a libertarian, I look at the world and the way it's going. Millennials love Bernie. They, they like the young people are feeling the burn because Ron Paul's delegation didn't show up in Iowa. Yeah. You know, for either Rand, like they showed up for Trump, but they but like that was minimal. Like young people are supporting Bernie they Sanders. Speak, out well, they got screwed. They, after the twenty twenty no, election, they got kicked out. A lot of yeah. them got kicked out. Well, they but why would you go back? And yeah, right. The young people that were supporting Bernie, just well, period. Well, yeah, who doesn't? Millennials want to are. So I look at that and I say, well, man, if it's two forty two now, what the hell chance does a libertarian? Because libertarian's hard to sell. Republicanism's hard to sell. Mm -hmm. I, and if there isn't a, a massive makeup in the Electoral College, I see blue unless yeah, they while. run someone that gets indicted by the FBI at the convention. Yeah. Like, that's the only way I see, like, a Republican or libertarian or anyone that just even maybe likes 1% tax cuts. Like, yeah. it's scary to me that we're at 242 in the Electoral College, and then there's one guy who is going to leave no philosophical lasting impression whatsoever because he's an absolute populist and his his platform is simple. Let's be honest, he's a madman. Eh, <laughs> he definitely in the, in the best way. He, he could be or he could be someone that is excellent at making people dance for him because he's spent a long time learning how to do it. I think he'll get the nomination. I don't. I think they're going to fight everything they can. Oh, and they there's will. Rule 16D, where I the think... same rules that applied expire right before the election. But so they can literally not renew the electoral rules of the RNC a no, week before the, it takes mm -hmm. place. I, I think Why there's going to be shady tricks. I mean, look what they did to Ron Paul, and Ron Paul was harmless in that situation. Ron Paul, also, Ron Paul also isn't a billionaire. In 2000, yeah. But here's the thing. In 2008, 2012, the, in both cycles, in state conventions and the national convention, they changed the rules and did shenanigans... Did. To keep Ron Paul out, you hear them talk about it all the time about Romney's people screwing over Ron Paul, mm -hmm. exactly. And it, which is hilarious because man, Ron Paul never got anywhere near the amount of media coverage that Bernie has gotten, and he was no. every bit as strong as Bernie. More stronger, if, yeah. If, yeah, and way more electable, mm -hmm. and way more electable, and and they never covered him. You're right, but I think it's just because the media hate, hates. It's the, the left paradigm. It's not just it's the, so yeah. much more. Yeah. Oh, the feels. But you right. gotta look he at cares. how Donald Trump's using the media too. He's not. He's using Twitter. He's using the internet. Direct connection. Direct. Yeah. It. Ron Paul was all filtered. His, it was filtered and framed. But right. on the internet, it was grassroots. Mm -hmm. It wasn't him directly tweeting, "Hey." Yeah, and he's, he's not as charismatic as Donald Trump. No, not no, at all. That's he, what's still going to be so hard to replicate yeah. the trial. Uh, right. there, there's he's no a way, perfect personality. Nobody, nobody can ever be Trump again. No. He's, well, it's, they'll try, ever, but, and like a new model will emerge where you might be able like, to create yeah. outrage. Our, our good friend Austin <laughs> Peterson is trying to be Trump, and it's not working. Oh, yeah, I just mean like Newt kind of pioneered it at the right. anger at the media in 08. Mm -hmm. Or was that 08? When did yeah. Newt run? No, 2012, because he lost to Romney. He won South Carolina by telling off. CNN, who was basically just reporting the fact that he left his wife with cancer for the doctor. Yeah. You know, and whether or not there was an open marriage. And he goes, he just went on a tirade. And that was when this, we're not going to get anything shoved down our throat anymore, start. Like, there was a little voice. And I think Trump saw at CPAC, Trump, he tested his messaging there. It, well, Trump also doesn't have anything to live for. I, it, it, politics yeah. don't matter to him. It's not his Which job. Which is the best thing to sell. He, he literally has this for you. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm. 
right, he yeah. said it and he said it he said it once the guy rushed the stage yeah. he said and I had a plush life before this like yeah. I'm out here doing this yeah like mm -hmm. I don't have to be doing this well yeah I it just it's which I know it, take it that's what's so tough though because like you but that comes off the head right. I mean is that do you do you think that's honest oh I absolutely think so I yeah what's well, self-interest yeah. this is about legacy that's I, all I, I need to do I how will the Trumps be remembered in U.S. history? Because they didn't matter before. Because they're all going to yeah. be cabinet members. <laughs> <laughs> the son and the daughter, are, I'd take them in any cabinet they're on great. any side. Right Trump, Trump Jr. and Ivanka seem lovely. I would love Eric her. was amazing on uh, Today Show. He's a little weird looking. Yeah, he's got that little... He's a little, you know. Yeah. yeah. He's got some open mouth. Yeah, but he's a mouth breather, and that's always off putting. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I don't know what Ivanka. I mean, Ivanka is. She seems really put together, really smart, really. Uh, I could see her having a political future. I mean, the the great thing is that Donald made the name, but the kids seem like they're going to be the real leaders. You know, Donald to me just doesn't say leadership. I don't see anybody ever being able to replicate what he's done. I just don't think that it's possible. No. You know, I think it, it comes across as hollow and phony if somebody else tries to do it. Because the thing about Donald is that he, had in, he has credibility. He just, he's been this way forever. People know who he is. He's been a known quantity. And he is... People apologize for him forever. They yeah. always have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? He can do whatever he wants. He's kind of Teflon. I mean, it's because he doesn't... Honestly, it doesn't bother him. I mean, it... It bother, he, he he's a scorekeeper, but if it really mattered to him how he was, you know, seen in his image, he'd never behave this way because he would yeah. constantly try to meet a standard that he'd never get into. I, I think he's either considerably mentally ill or he is totally comfortable with himself. Again, it's just so hard to pin down because he's... Because they flirt with that very yeah, thin line. Yeah, he's just hard to pin down. He's, there's, Mac, there's a little McAfee... In Trump, oh, for sure. There's a little crazy genius. So we're well over two hours. Let's go to. Uh, we. <laughs> I would love right to. The we were so boring. <laughs> a white Jew that hates guns and it is a political ploy oh. to replace Scalia, which is a thumb in the eye. No way. Yeah. Not oh, right. I don't know. It's and you got an angry mob of first-time Republicans that are. They're waiting. They're gonna wait it out. The, all the political capital is for Mitch McConnell to say, "Go after yourself," and no one's better at thumbing his eye and not getting upset than Mitch McConnell. This this was really a political ploy to help swing the Senate. Yep. They chose a centrist, somebody that would be uh, easily digestible by Republicans. He's not a flaming liberal, so it's not obvious. So then they could score the point. And this guy, this is his last go around. This is his only opportunity to get on the court. He's a little bit older. Um, 68? Yeah, yeah. He's 68? No, not no, quite that 60, old. I think he's like 63. Yeah, 63? he's early 60s. Yeah. Someone called him John Roberts, but against guns. And I thought, that's about perfect. Uh, yeah, people have called him Brennan. He's a consensus builder. He, he actually, if, if Kennedy passed away, he would be the perfect yeah. Kennedy replacement. But this is Scalia. And so the conservatives are never going to ever... They're going to roll the dice. The and, NRA. Right. And you know who Trump's putting in In an NRA. election year. Judge Napolitano. That's the rumor. He said it. <laughs> and that would be... I'm not kidding. That it would be incredible. Really. That would be amazing. That's man. a reason because to vote for him. one thing, like... <laughs> I, I haven't necessarily, like, fled the real case of... You know, it's, it's long and nuanced or like anything. But, you know, realistically, the next president appoints... Three. Three minimum, probably four. Yeah. Right. Hillary Clinton, that changes the nature of a lot of things. And, yeah. like, you know, I get it. I get act, judicial activism because Republican justices are guilty of that a lot of times mm -hmm. for social issues as well. But at the end of the day, God, you can't really have another Robert who you think's on your side and then oh, yeah. listens to the argument of the Solicitor General, knows that won't work, and then makes your case for you writing the majority opinion. Yeah. Well, that's thing, never, I mean, that's incredible. The thing with Roberts is Roberts hasn't been as conservative as Alito, certainly not as much as Scalia, but he has been a solid conservative on the court. He just did the unforgivable and gave Obamacare two, two free passes. And he did it, for, like, so the, the government's attorney didn't make the case right. that yeah, was presented. He, went to get, he, went, he wrote their case. Yeah. And I thought, how did you do that? I mean, the case that was argued before you said, no, you're an idiot. Here's how it would work, and we're going to make this 5-4 now. We know, we know what you meant. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, was lit it was literally conservative. Oh, oh, you wrote this, but you know what? I mean, that we is know like what amazing. you meant because yeah, yeah we, he we he, he would be. He's a Stevens. He's a Brennan. He's a centrist. 
but he's, you know, you're a centrist, you're still going to lean left or you're going to lean right. He leans a little left, but he still, he still would be a decent pick again if uh, someone other than Scalia, if that, I mean, they're, they're, you're not going to get, but here's the question that I kind of have. Are you really ever going to get on the court again, at least in our lifetime or in the, at least in the next three political cycles of four years? Um, each. So the next 12 years, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Are you really going to get a Scalia on the court ever again? Are you really ever going to get a Ginsburg on the court again? Or is the future of the court really going to lie in center left, center right? To me, and that's the one, like, my favorite thing about him. Donald Trump being president will give zero craps whether you like him or don't, and right. he'll bully the hell out of you and do everything he yep. can to belittle you, diminish your credibility, to spread lies. Him. And I know that's a horrible thing to do. But is that what we want? If it's the difference between Scalia and somebody that thinks you don't have the right to defend yourself with a weapon, bring in your home. Yeah. yeah. It's an es- like sometimes that's what makes necessary. Evils. That's what makes this election crazy. And, and so he important. won't appoint. He won't appoint a social conservative. He's pro gay marriage. Yeah. They ask him. He wins evangelicals, and he yeah. says, "Oh yeah, sometimes I like to go and say the bad things I've done and have a cracker." <laughs> and he calls Second Corinthians Corinthians, Corinthians two, two. Yeah. and you're like, coming up. He's admittedly pro gay marriage, and I don't think he gives a choice. shit about social issues. No, he's gonna ignore him and shove him in the closet. Yeah. Show up for election day. Uh, we we meant to talk about Apple too, uh, and the Apple encryption case because mm-hmm. Harry's here. Uh, briefly, the the government wants to break into one iPhone. Uh, <laughs> that's their argument. That they're, they're yeah. and we tweeted out it's just one. The, yeah. the government's case. This time, the yeah. one the one that they locked. We swear <laughs> we'll uh, we'll let you uh, help us break into this one. And the pro- and the OS that you gave us, we promise we'll never get out. Unlike those files that Edward Snowden took. Unlike you know people's social security right. numbers. Uh, you know. We probably we promise we won't keep it on some, some private email server in someone's house, you know. So it's the, my my biggest problem with uh, well, one of the problems with it is that you know even if they did create it, something that didn't exist, if mm-hmm. they did create it, it's going to get out. Yeah, it's going to get out everywhere. It's going to get out faster than um, the crappy Sony movie about North Korea. Yeah. Well, they're they're saying that listen, it's not an undue burden. Apple has all of these resources and people and and everything. It'll take them six people to go and do this and create this thing for this one iPhone. But the problem is those six people then become at risk for kidnapping and ransom. I mean, for the world's business. Like that, it's just under kind of... burden. It's going to be an under burden. Um, Apple is, has started to get on the main stage of uh, malicious crackers that people want to go after Apple. We finally start seeing the first... Um, ransomware coming out for Apple devices. Hmm. Those engineers need to be starting getting on their game because you know the security holes in the, of the Apple OS are going to become more apparent to more people out there. Right. Apple needs to be watching to secure their user base. They've got an entire user base which they sold on the idea that hey, buy our products. You don't need antivirus or security. Yeah. Wrong. What they've got a huge market share now in the United States, and their comp- and, and crackers are coming after them. Yeah. It's compromised. So I take it you're against this. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, Harry's on the side of ISIS. Yes. <laughs> Harry loves devices. <laughs> no, ISIS. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's with with the terrorists. He's oh. hand in hand with Bin Laden. Well, you're either one or the other. You I know. know. I mean, everything's black. Or Nuance white. has no place in yeah. political no. discussions, uh, especially security. Damn yeah. it. Maybe we can get you to write an article on this for WeAreLibertarians.com. Since we ran out of the time on the podcast, maybe we can get you to write something for the, the website. Like that, uh, well, then maybe record a little podcast on it. Give me like a five minute. I don't know. I don't want, okay. I want your yeah. expertise. Yeah. I'll, t- I'll probably do a mini vlog and make Joe transcribe it. Yeah, That'd be nice. Right. Whatever's more work for Joe Ruiz. Do a yeah. vlog. That would be yeah. good. Vlogity. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you the login to the YouTube. You can upload the video. So I, I'd love to give. I'd love to get that out there. That was actually the first topic we were going to discuss, but then we got we got started in on politics, and that's yeah. more fun than I'll Apple. Take the blame. It is your fault. Yeah. Start playing the music and just took over. <laughs> and I didn't want to talk Trump tonight I, at all. I no. specifically said I'm. I am. You know, there's no there's no one left to make a, an argument to. 
It's it. Yeah, that's kind of it. And anyone, and it's if you try such and lay an it out, intriguing. It's the most polarizing it, well, right now. I I'm seeing friendships being lost over positive oh, trophies. Yeah. It, like it's, it's amazing and it's, negative ones. We it's, didn't even it's hilarious. We didn't even talk about Walter Block, which is the whole reason we were going to talk about this. Yeah. Which Walter Block has been on the show. He's a very influential libertarian. Defending uh, the undefendables. Yeah, he is. Uh, a, he's a, a giant, a living giant uh, of libertarians, and he endorsed Trump, and he came out and endorsed him, which I don't. I don't quite get. What was his reasoning? Did you read it? Did anybody? I did read. Uh, oh yeah, I man, it was the standard one. Yeah, I he's think the he... most likely to affect change of the. Well, existing he's the options. most likely closest to libertarian who's actually electable is right. what is what the summary because he can is. actually win the electoral college and no other candidate left can yeah. so here's the value of experience and having been through a presidential cycle as a libertarian party insider as part of the establishment insider. walter block and the ron paul crowd the lou rockwell crowd all those guys who have been around all the mises guys they're all republicans for the most part i mean they're not card-carrying republicans they're not showing up to meetings but because Ron Paul forever has been a Republican, they are Republicans, and they are they vote Republican. They probably don't vote for Romney, but they'll they'll certainly um, in this case say you let's put it this way: yeah. classical liberals. Is it absolutely? Yeah. yeah, I think I well, think I, it's I think classical liberal fits underneath the Constitution too. You yeah. can't really have. Anarchy under a constitution. So it, it, it is it is a dichotomy, and it's not one that I have a problem with because I certainly am dichotomous in this way. Okay. You know, the, the the people that I think are going to be the more effective when? in the office of president are going to be the more establishment types, like a Jeb Bush, like a Hillary Clinton, whereas an idealist like Barack Obama or Ron Paul or Bernie Sanders aren't going to be as effective. Uh, in managing the bureaucracy. That's why Bill Clinton was so effective as president, because he was just an effective manager of bureaucracy. He was a centrist. He was not an idealist. He was about practicality, which is where Donald Trump probably falls, um, because he's probably a centrist, leaning right, and he's pragmatic and wants results. Um, you know, And so there are a lot of libertarians who are anarchists in their beliefs, but also are very politically pragmatic, and say, you know, I'm going to vote for the Republican because they're going to do this. But at the and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because I live in a state with, you know, I'm in a blue state or a red and state. I think that was his argument too: is right. that literally, Donald Trump is electable and he holds a certain percentage of what you could right. consider a libertarian idea. Yeah, I, he actually like he actually does it, or like you know. Non interventions, his no. big home yeah. run. And then well, that's what he said. Foreign policy, yeah. he said he was the strongest on as far he's as the libertarian most, beyond. Yeah, he's the most non intervention candidate left. Other than the war crimes thing, but whatever. Well, it's ISIS. Silly. They're not. We don't even recognize them as a state. So. And that was my that was my <laughs> my my whole thing's war based crimes. on. I think difference doesn't mix. I think he's threatening it's, things to get the alternative. Yeah, I, I do yeah. too. I think that's I think it's backdoor. Chip. I think in a weird way, it's backdoor liberty, just because that's been like his frat. That's my favorite porno. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's just, like I said. Like I always held the truth of, of uh, Donald Trump is a hidden Ron Paul supporter here to kill the brand of the GOP, and the, by the only way he knows how. Yeah, because he didn't do it that. philosophically. Nope. Yeah. Uh, okay. Final thoughts. This is your uh, free time to talk about whatever you'd like. Tyler, you go first. Well, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, has been i know we kind of straight off topic from the uh the show prep but there's no planning i wasn't really prepped for anything so <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a trump rally right well you uh, worked you worked hard today no i did work hard you came up and you freestyled your rally i did i freestyled it uh, straight off the dome yo 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 <laughs> gregory oh you're not done right no i oh, no i i think we had a pretty good conversation. You don't want to plug your mixtape or your SoundCloud? I don't have, I'm not selling anything. I'm just selling myself. He's just selling <laughs> liberty. You're licensing liberty, your brand. Liberty and chill. Making America great again. No, yeah. Buy Donald's uh, Made in America hat. Put America into the world. Are they made in America? They are made in America. Yeah. Look, you don't want one of those rip-off ones. Uh, see the ones the Chinese rip us off and counterfeit. They're from yeah. California. I gotta tell you, it's those a nice real, hat. Those Do you real. have one? I'm just curious. No, not yet. I oh, actually really? have two in every have you, color. Have you spent? Have you used digital currency towards the future acts purchasing of one? 
<laughs> if you must know, you've ruined the surprise. Yes, I have. Uh -oh. I, somebody <laughs> picked a candidate. I, no, I didn't. I bought the red one, but I bought it for. Mm, I, I, I'm kind of regretting it because of this white on gold. That white. Listen, this is sh the shit. I had it to is. put on a collar just to rock it because it's so fresh. It is so <laughs> great. Uh huh. Five swear words. It's five. Sorry. Hey, how long did it take to get here? Um, what do you mean? Like the shipping? Oh, it's seven to fourteen days. Oh no, it took me three. I was gonna say for Hannah's wedding, Hannah Drazic, who's been on Coy's oh, yeah. Come Republican, let's get both go dressed in blue blazers with white shirts oh, and make America that. great hats. See if you can get it. By the way, kids, <laughs> I went back and I bought two in every color. One to wear <laughs> and one to save for my grandkids. They're they are gonna be the beanie babies of that the that, millennial generation. Honestly, that's the other reason I bought the hat. There there's two reasons. One for this show and work, my mm -hmm. other show. Bob and Tom. And then two, because it's a great collector's item. This yeah. is a great piece of political history. And then I spent my tax return on Jeb's guac bowl. Yeah. Because I know those are going to be more the shit. That will be, future. not kidding, that'll be in a Smithsonian someday. Because I'm sure you're the only person that bought one. I know. I just <laughs> haven't seen a hat like this. It's got like the... The, the gangster. Guys. No, look, it keeps it, it's got the mesh on the inside. On the inside, inside to it keep it up. And it's... it keeps your hair fluffy if you got the... You know who pioneered on. these, though, was that brand... Um, that did the Reagan Bush 84 like retro runs and then uh -huh. the back to back world champs I forget who it is uh, um, but like they yeah. were the ones that had the propped up front and then the Ameri it wasn't American Apparel was no it's not American Apparel but it's like a oh it's it's a, like yeah. oh no it's like American it's something Mer uh, yeah. you know, and he then yeah. takes it and creates Complex. he cuts off the lets off Reagan Bush 84 or 80 Cuts off the lets. He said, that's, he said that's, let's too, make that's too weird. Again. You can't tweet that. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he cut it down, and he's lost Iowa. He set out the debate of Iowa just like Reagan. Right. And he, he's basically just relived history and copied it. This this is the, the hat. The, the hat the is yeah, exactly. a, alone a brilliant marketing move. Oh, for sure. He took his slogan, and he put it on a hat, and then he wore the stupid hat, and everybody made fun of him. And then everybody started going, I'm going to get me a hat because it's ironic. And then it is. And it's a great looking hat. Hipsters honestly. are wearing them like crazy, no, which I is know. the funniest thing. Of the Bernie bros are buying these hats gold. and wearing them. Look at it that is. gold. That's actual gold leaf. It's classy. It's That's a, imported. It's a beautiful hat. It's a formal hat. It, no, it is. <laughs> I, told, I told Greg I cannot wear this uh -huh. hat without a collar on. I honestly might get that one, too. It's, it's swanky. Worth it. Look how swanky this damn thing is. Can you imagine showing up at like a, <laughs> like a formal event and you have a tux on and that? Oh, you have to. I'm doing it. Niece's baptism? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Greg, final thoughts. Final thoughts? I just want to be on the record because I am the weird Trump guy. I am the one that shockingly has very odd views because I think everything he says he intends to generate the opposite of. As posturing, so you know, I think realistically, he wants a Americans are sick of war, he knows it, he's tapping into it. And the only way you can keep people from making aggressive acts when you're trying to retreat and pull people out of places is to threaten that you're going to go after their families. Um, the stuff on the trade, the real, the re, you know, for me, economics is what I follow and love. And the reality is, we're a trade deficit country, we have a a group, an angry mob that is sick of being told to be reasonable and logic. Mm -hmm. I'm worried if, if he were to not get it, or if, you know, what kind of mob that turns into because it isn't going to go away. The anger he yeah. stoked is not going anywhere. And if you go and trot out a Rom, look what happened, Romney. Oh, wow. He goes up. You trot out everybody in the Republican Party. He goes up. You trot out the media. It, they've created an us against the world mentality because they played exactly what they wanted them to do. And he's, he's their only savior. There, there isn't anybody who should be surprised by Trump. I, I've, I attended and helped organize the Indiana Tea Party. I've been to almost, you know, all the initial meetings. I've been to all the major rallies in 2009, 2010. I've been to, up until 2012, a bunch of different Tea Party meetings all around the state of Indiana. I can tell you that everything that you see Donald Trump saying has been said in Tea Party meetings for many, many, many years. And if the media or establishment Republicans had gone to these meetings, they certainly would be in touch with it. Mm -hmm. I think your average Republican congressman certainly understands it because they're... <laughs> they're the you know, ones that show up at town halls. Right. <laughs> uh, and talking to my congressman friend, it's just common to come across a Trump voter, you know, before they were Trump voters, 
with this kind of anger. I mean, everybody gets it. Everybody gets there. There's just been this firewall between the presidential race and the congressional races, and that's broken down. He is the Tea Party candidate. And, you know, that's why you see conservative politicians saying, yeah, there's real anger out there. I get it. And that's why you see Democrats and the media going, where did this come from? It's because you don't go to the, you don't go to Tea Party meetings. This is totally predictable. This has been, this has been eight years in the making. They talk about tax credits and expanding the welfare safety net and offering job training solutions, but then it's done. They've washed yeah. their hands of helping. The reality is that guy that got laid off, he's you know, over 50. Yeah. He's not, no one's going to yeah. hire him for a job for long-term development. And so he's stuck saying, I took it on the nose. And granted, it's, it's like as a libertarian, you're personally responsible to anticipate where the market's going and what you should do. But your government, if you have one, and the candidates you support, should free trade isn't about one side being a martyr or an unbalanced. Yeah. The goal is we both play on by as close to the same rules as possible, mm -hmm. and we have at it. We specialize because we make these products best. You specialize because you make those products best. There's no restriction on access to markets. Mm -hmm. And we're, we intertwine in what happens is after World War II, Toyotas and Hondas are the best selling car in the United States. Like that's the ideal, that's the foreign policy platform. Right now with China, they're a growing power, but they're really struggling. They have a totally export based economy. They will not allow, the yuan is so devalued mm -hmm. that their people that work in the factories have to live in government house, or in yeah. uh, co corporate housing and they jump off at Foxconn and they had to put nets around the production facilities. Which one? Huh? Which one? <laughs> yeah, the one. Uh, Joe Ruiz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nacho Gordito Ruiz. Build a wall! <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, like, that's... The wall thing is now... We actually do know, like... Well, NAFTA was designed to keep illegal immigrants in Mexico so they'd stop coming across and seeking, seeking yeah. employment. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the, our welfare state, because we want to help... We spent billions of dollars annually to the tune roughly each year just on illegal immigrants for food, housing, and transporting them back and remittances to the Mexican government. Over $100 billion. And yet, like Joe Ruiz, our co-host, you know, he was talking about like a while ago or whatever, trying to get their kids health care. And why wouldn't we spend that money on Joe's kids who's a citizen of our, you know? <laughs> he's a born citizen. He's, yeah. just, he's just Hispanic. He's not... That Hispanic. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I mean like, like it, 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 you know, the, li <laughs> the libertarian position is, you know, we're all humans and there aren't borders and they're fake. And it's yeah, but you, that's also taking into consideration that you don't have a welfare state going on. Right, and that, that's right, the yeah. ultimate goal, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's the I thing. would rather have a wall that Mexico's going to pay for and somewhat of a. Wait, why are you snickering? Over that? And you somewhat. Be, like, pay for that. And somewhat I'll, of a I, welfare I'll, state I'll for our citizens. You know? I get it, I mean, tariffs, but it's just. No, it's no. not. No, so that's the funny part. It isn't tariffs. Okay. It's what we already currently spend right now yeah. on remittances when we send them back to the government for sending them back. Right. Is enough in three years to pay for a $100 billion wall. Remittance <laughs> of, the, of housing of them in, ja in jail we lose for, a, for when criminals come over. We lose $83 billion uh, just in tax credits to illegal aliens. Border security. Uh, for having people on the, yeah. on the wall to watch, like yeah. watch people coming across. Yeah, you save that for doing the wall. Yeah. I'm not advocating for the wall. No. <laughs> Why not? Just, Get on board, I'm, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just saying this is hey, it can, it's, it's, it, can, it can be done easily. It, yeah, this is how it is done. And, it's not and just pay for it because then they don't get to sell their yeah. products here and they have massive social unrest and the drug cartels take over the country. It's yeah. not That's just Hispanics, Hispanics either. It's, yeah. it's a lot of illegal yeah. Asians who are overstaying visas as well. That's the OJ Who are staying here for tech jobs. If mm -hmm. I would have done it, this is what <laughs> I would do. Mm -hmm. If I did it, not saying I did it, I would support. But if I would, this is how it would go. But right, so like that's none of this stuff. I really don't think he's gonna. He has no intention of building a wall. We're not. It's like you said. There are it's no fun, funds beautiful in the gates. Door. You know, like, yeah. The, yeah. The moment he, that funds get freed up. Congress will spend it on something else. Something it's just another ridiculous. big government program that the government's we're not going to be able to. The, the government's not going to be able to complete it on time. The government's they're not going to be able to complete it. It's not going to be kept no, it's up. Gonna be, it's going to be ahead of schedule and under budget. Damn it! He's yeah. never put on a freaking hat. Yeah. bureaucracy. That, yeah. whose job security lasts. <laughs> oh, you need to last him. That's the kid. Well, Mexico's going to build it. Which is why I think he it. knows this, and he knows the currency manipulation with China. <laughs> I, I swear to God, like. If you're a Texas you Hold'em player, you bluff everything you can, exactly. and you get the wins when they are like, "Oh shit, we couldn't take it." If the United, if we cut off the U.S. market 
with a 45% import tax on Chinese products, everyone would have the Chinese Communist Politburo hanging from Tiananmen Square yeah. because it'd be awful. Now, you can't do currency manipulation and make them revalue now because then the same outcome happens. Yeah, so what you do is you throw it at them, and you have to act like a blustering idiot. Yeah. Nixon told people he had Alzheimer's and that he couldn't wait to use the nuke. And it kept people from being, acting up. He's literally using, I'm selling a building, so I'm going to list it for $6 billion. I only I know it's worth one point two, but hell, if I get three for it... I have nothing to lose by walking exactly. away. Yeah. And, but that's so hard because American politics is based on this is what I stand for and this is why you should support me. Right. Then we're shocked when people get elected well, exactly. and they anticipate what we're going to do. It's hard, what, it's hard <laughs> to break campaign promises when nobody knows what you promise. Exactly. And that's why he's running on just vague... That's why he's running on vague things because... But it's it's funny because it, like, people, people are hammering people on it, but I'm like... People don't care. I wish Barack Obama, like in Libya, hadn't said, well, we're, you know... We're open to regime That's change. That's the timeline. He's called Obama out. I wish he had timelines. said, we will turn the sand glowing. Yeah. No one will be able to live in Libya it'll be for years. It'll be molten glass if for you guys have been <laughs> thinking about years. social unrest. All right, we're too excited about Trump. We've got to finish we're up. Not, but Libya. I mean, it is interesting because yeah. he's very hungry. He's brought back an element that's been missing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Interesting. Harry, thoughts? final thoughts? <laughs> um, a uh, couple of things. Uh, one thing I do like about this whole campaign is watching the left actually go after Hillary. I don't oh, want to yeah. go too much of that, but just watching them like actually admit to some of the the vile crap the Clintons have done, and to watch the uh, I had a uh, some of you guys might see this one tr uh, Facebook troll I've had on my account that I know from high school, and I'm watching liberals block him because of his vehement <laughs> support of Hillary and saying like, no, you're not looking up the facts. I was like. This campaign is amazing. I don't want it to end. <laughs> I mean, Jeb was the first to get, you know, oh, wow. removed. But the, Barbara Bush said it best when she said in an interview, America's tired of the Bushes and the Clintons. Yeah. yeah. And they are. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's pretty much the, like, um, all I've got is, like, I'm trying to keep it quick about, like, that's what I like about this whole campaign season. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. That's great. It's making campaigns great again. Uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please hit up wearelibertarians.com, donate, uh, download podcasts, make podcasts great again. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. And as always, we promise to do better remix next time. Chicka, chicka. <laughs> as always, we promise to do, wait, as no. always, we promise to do better next time. There we go. Chicka, chicka. Uh, <laughs> it's been like four in a row.